Mm, there we go. Here you, here you, gather around, gather around. Anyone who will listen. A tale of humans and witches and bullshittery to the highest level. Just remember, when the seagulls cry, none shall be left alive. There might be pirates in this story, though. Actually, now that I think about it, that's wrong. <laughs> we, we we will have pirate stuff at one point in Umineko. Much, much later on, episode 8. Hold on a sec. Yeah, sorry, really. I, I didn't realize. I mean, it thought it was a rhetorical question. Yes, that's clearly Ray Moon Marissa in the background of the, uh, I assume that's the Umi Neko fighting game, right? Uh, Golden Rondo. PC, please work with me here. For, for context, Real DM me this earlier and asked me, is that Ray Moon Marissa in the background? And yes, it's Ray Moon Marissa and Sakuya. It's the whole PCB cast. Yes, he's a Toho fan. He's met Zun before. He's drank with Zun. I mentioned this a couple times. It's pretty well known that he's a big Toho fan. Uh, this, this like band reference thing happens in the game, as in the VN, the anime, and the fighting game. So there you go. It happens everywhere. I don't know how that's supposed to be in the drums. Like, I guess you can see them in the background too. I don't. I don't know who that is. That just looks like it's someone unrelated. That, I, I actually don't really know. I'm not like shitting around either. Okay. Anyway. So, yesterday, when we ended off, um, Rosa was about to tell us about how she supposedly killed Beatrice? Whatever that means. Man, if only without easy, huh? So, the adults were gathered in the dining hall, spending a very long time continuing the discussion that had been started by Beatrice's letter. Ralph strongly claimed that the letter was a simple prank. But he couldn't return the claim. Hold on, I, I don't think I saved last time. I, I think I need to skip forward through stuff. I, I think we're starting where I started before. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, I need to hold control for a couple minutes. I close the game without saving. And it doesn't exactly auto save. We have to skip back to the whole big argument that Battler and Beatrice had. Oops, hey Zelda fan. Hello everyone. This shouldn't take too long. Okay, it might take three to five minutes. Good time to go get a drink, if you want. Uh, it's not going to be as bad as, like, Cataclysm yesterday, at least. Waiting for Broken Bones to heal. In the end, that did work out. And I'll explain more later on when I play Cataclysm. The run is still alive. I'm proud to say. This is the, uh, the copyright free version of Wubin Echo where the songs only play for 5 seconds so you don't get copyright struck. It's very nice, it's very monetizable. I think we're almost there. Hold on. Eventually everyone's gonna leave. I think we might be caught up now. Let me see. Not actually sure, honestly. Um, no, I think I... No, no. We still have more to go through, actually. She's about to say the whole thing about... Yep. We need to go to the next part where Rosa gets to talk. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I blame every single viewer for not pointing out the fact that I didn't save. How did you guys mess this up? Homunculus. Red text sounds. We can go over the red text again in a second as well, maybe. Just to like as a lead up of what we're about to go into. Okay, this should be good. Okay, perfect. 
So yeah, quick review with the red text. Uh, Belphic Wars doesn't matter. Essentially just run a base matter. A hidden mansion called Guadonia exists. Uh, the conversation they showed was true. This happened in 1967. Beatrice existed as a human in the hidden mansion on Rokenjima in 1967. Essentially, you can sum this up just with this last one here, honestly. The others, they're kind of a bit redundant, right? So, try to think about what this could possibly mean for Beatrice, you know? I should actually do this. Rosa eventually regained her calm. The men wanted to hurry her into talking faster, but Kirie intervened. If something like that really happened, then it would have been a terrible experience that Rosa wouldn't want to remember. After taking several deep breaths with her hand over her chest, it seemed that she had more or less resolved herself to talk. How old was I then, I wonder? Middle school, probably? Though I don't remember well. Anyway, I think it was about that age. Which means, maybe about 20 years ago? Back then, my grades weren't very good, and Mother was always angry at me. I tried to do my best in my own way, but I couldn't match up to Mother's expectations at all. Mother was always very strict with, with Rosa. I sympathized with her at the time. Hmm. You say that even though you were always talking behind her back. Did you give it a rest, Ava? And then? Why'd you meet Beatrice, Rosa's son? Hideyoshi-san, you mustn't rush her now. It's okay, Rosa-san. Tell us at your own pace. Thank you. It was a day I'd been harshly scolded by mother. Flashback. Even though my tutor had promised to keep it a secret, apparently they told mother all about how I'd complained. Mother scolded me, br me brutally, saying my name was a disgrace to the Ushima family. I feel like every child has heard that a few times. Of course, I was doing the best I could, but I had none of Krauss Nissan's dignity, I couldn't get excellent grades like Ebene san and I had no leadership abilities like Rudolf Nissan. I never stood out, didn't particularly excel at anything, and I found myself asking why I'd even been born into the Ishimura family. I began to question more and more why I'd even been born at all. This is what happened on the day I experienced my mind going blank for the first time. For the first time in my life, I realized that in addition to facing or surrendering to my problems, I had the third choice of running away. Though I say, run away, there was no way I could have left Rokenjima and gone somewhere else. But anyway, I wanted to run away from the mansion and my own self at that time. In a way, it was like a kid running away from home, or maybe a passive sort of suicide. Yeah, she rolled the wrong CDDA scenario. I wanted to disappear. Or maybe it was that childlike form of resistance where I tried to make my parents worry by disappearing. I childishly thought that if I went to the center of the forest, escaped from the Ushibita house, and maybe it became lost, then I'd make them worry and teach them a lesson. And then, you went to the forest that you were told never to enter? Yes. After reaching the beach, I fell alongside the ocean. I don't have any particular reason, but I felt that, if I went around to the opposite side of the island, there might be a place that no one knew about, which might become a hidden house just for me. If you go around by the beach, that'd be impossible. It becomes a cliff part way, right? There's no way you could pass that way. Of course. So, I kept going wherever I could, which kept taking me deeper and deeper inland. It's a horrible forest without any paths, but that was comforting to me then. If I could make it through such a dangerous forest, then I'd be that much further away from the Ishimura family. How shameful. If you were scolded because of your grades, all you had to do was work harder. You mustn't say that. Are you seriously shit-talking her for like 20 years ago? She was a child. Doesn't Rosa have her talent as a, as a designer instead? Literally speaking, he was covering for Rosa. But everyone knew that Rosa's company hadn't been profitable. Quit it. This is no time for sarcasm. So, you managed to end up there by coincidence? At Beatrice's hidden mansion. Rosa nodded weakly. Well, how far did you walk? Could you show it to us on a map? Nancy yeah, said, do you have a map of this island? Yeah, she's like... I think she just does... I don't know specifically. Yeah, just says design company. That could mean anything, I guess. Let's see. I don't... Let's see. He's just president of a restaurant chain. Rouse has like his theme park thing he's trying to open, but okay, real estate, resort, and I don't, I have no idea what Rudolph does. He's also like a company president, I think, but he doesn't really say what he actually does. Shady business, apparently. No, there wasn't one here now. It wouldn't help. I was just walking randomly. Even if you gave me a map, I wouldn't know. But 20 years have passed since then. I probably couldn't reach it again, even if I went into the forest. Hmm. Several people without dejected size. 
It was vividly clear that in their haste, they thought some hint related to the witch's epitaph, or maybe even the gold itself might be resting there. On Arkenjima, only the land around the mansion is ready to be developed on. The rest is completely uncultivated, and it would take a lot of work to survey the entire island. But just knowing that it actually exists is helpful. It would take some money, but if we enlisted an aerial photography company to investigate, or ask the businessman who constructed this mansion about what happened at the time, we could probably find some way to search for it. I mean, surely, like, you have, like, connections, and you just... Surely someone has a friend with a helicopter, right? Who could just go over there and just say, Hey, it's over this way. Walk, walk straight from, like, the, the back side of the mansion or something. Surely it's not that hard. It's a mansion. A hidden mansion. Not a house, not a shack, a mansion. That's right. At least we have more options now, as opposed to when we weren't sure it existed. Indeed, it may be worth investigating right away. Too bad there's a typhoon. The siblings will do that investigation together. We won't leave you on your own, Nissan. It wasn't yet certain that the gold was hidden in that secret mansion, but the sparks seemed to have started flying between Kraus and Eva already. Give it a rest for now, you two. Rosa, please continue. Yes. Of course, I had coffee off camera. Always have some ready. New music. Randomly, randomly, I kept running, on and on. Suddenly, I came across something I thought was an animal trail. I was very tired and had no idea how far I'd walked, so at that time, I naturally took the easiest path. As I did, suddenly, right before my eyes, a very, very tall fence appeared. It was a fence wonderfully adorned in the gothic style. For an instant, I thought I'd gotten turned around and returned to the original mansion. Of course, there were fences around the mansion to stop us from entering the forest. But this fence was decorated differently, and moreover, it was very tall. It probably reached a full two stories up. It was covered with ivy and created a mysterious, solemn atmosphere. At the time, I believed in the legend of the Witch of the Forest, Beatrice. I had been told that she was frightening but some of the servants told me that she'd sometimes help you if you respected her. Since I had a little confidence in those days, I believed the only way I could be saved was by receiving her help. That's why I thought what I did. I believed that this was the fence of the mansion belonging to Beatrice, the Witch of the Forest. I thought that if I could meet with Beatrice, she'd definitely save me. So I decided to try going in. But the fence was very, very tall, and it didn't look like I'd be able to go over it. So I chose to walk around it. I thought that if I did, I'd eventually reach a gate. But it wasn't that easy. The fence had an incredible length to match its incredible height, and no matter how far I went, I didn't reach a corner. It might have encircled a massive area, or maybe I just had an impression because my child's legs made it difficult to walk in the forest. Anyway, I couldn't find a gate for a while, and I started to feel sad as though the witch had rejected me. As I did, I eventually came upon a large tree whose twisted root had bent the fence. It might get my, get my clothes dirty, but if I crawled, it looked like I'd be able to sneak in. And there you found the hidden mansion? I don't know if it was the hidden mansion we've been talking about. Still, at the very least, it wasn't a place that we know of. It wasn't as though I came out into a garden as soon as I passed the fence. I had to continue through a lot more uncultivated forest after that. As I did, the forest suddenly opened up. It appeared there was an unbelievably fantastical scene. To think that, on Arkenjima, where I thought only we lived, there could be such a wonderful mansion hidden away. A beautiful flower garden spanned the front of the mansion. It was a flower garden of a completely different design from the rose garden we know so well, but it was very lovely. Of course, the mansion was also wonderful. It was a couple sizes smaller than ours, but it was still elegant and adorable at the same time. Then, I saw her figure. I saw her sitting in a garden chair, positioned to give a view of the flower garden, wearing an elegant dress. It was that black dress embroidered in gold that we would later know from that portrait. I hadn't seen an elegant dress like that, except in fairy tales and on the stage of musicals. For a person to be wearing it as a normal clothes, that in itself seemed quite fantastical. That mysterious scene was enough to make me lose my sense of reality. If someone had told me that it was a dream, I might have nodded obediently and waited to wake up in my bed. I'd forgotten to hide myself in my shock, so she eventually spotted me. At first, her expression was quite listless, but when she noticed me, her eyes opened very wide. It was only natural, considering that a guest she didn't know had suddenly appeared. I lowered my head automatically, planning to greet her and apologize for entering without permission. Who 
are you? The new gardener? Those were the first words she said to me. I grew slightly calmer, because I realized that we could talk to each other. Because I hadn't been turned into a frog just by meeting her eyes, like a terrifying witch in a fairy tale. I, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have entered the garden without permission. Who are you? Name yourself. I, I am Ushimira Rosa. Ushimira... Oh? One of Kinzo's family? Huh? Uh, yes. I'm Kinzo's daughter. G good afternoon. I was a little surprised. After all, father was a great man feared by everyone. And yet, she'd spoken of him without using honorifics. That's a good point. So I was immediately terrified of her. After all, if she could refer to my fearsome father that way, she must be a witch with incredible power. After staring at me curiously, she beckoned me to come over. Frightened as I was, I obeyed. After all, I thought she might really turn me into a frog. The closer I got, the stronger that fear became. After all, as I keep saying over and over, that woman in her dress in the flower garden of the mansion, that whole picture was so fantastic and beautiful that it seemed separate from reality. It probably wouldn't have surprised me at all to learn that she really was a witch. That's kind of surprising that Beatrice has, has the pipe here. It strikes me as a bit weird, but... Hmm. Uh, yeah, if you're close to someone, you can avoid using the honorific, but some people even keep using them regardless, no matter how close they get, like, even in marriage and whatnot. But typically in Umineko, you'll only really see it, like, between, like, couples. The kids typically use honorifics with each other as well. There might be a couple cases where they don't, I'm not sure, but... Yeah, the fact that, like, someone as big of a deal as Kinzo is supposedly okay with it is kind of shocking in that sense, but it seems like Kinzo has feelings for her, so I guess that's why Bevel's kids and servants. I mean, servants, yeah, they don't... They, some of them, I think, don't use them in reference to someone, uh, like the others. Like, Cannon and Shannon would definitely not use them with each other, but I think the others might? I'm not sure. I don't remember all the exact, like, combinations here. But yeah, there, there's some cases where it's okay to not use them. Either because of, like, maturity or closeness or whatnot. So I guess it's a good thing, like, that the honorifics are written to the translation, maybe. I don't know. Some people care about that stuff, some people don't. I don't mind it. It's just a bit different than what I'm used to reading, and it's not what I really write at the moment. I used to write stuff with honorific with honorifics written in, but I've stopped. Typically, when translating honorifics into English, the only ones you'll really use are the more extreme ones, like Sama. You'll say, like, Lady Beatrice, or, like, Lady Yuyuko, or something like that. Lord Kinzo, something like that. But for, like, San and Chan, you typically don't really want to bother, because you wouldn't use an honorific in that situation in English. Well, in Japanese, it's almost more of a title to use Sama on someone. It isn't really one, but it's, it's a close equivalent, and San's closest equivalent is Mr. And we use Mr. in very different situations than the Japanese use San, so it is not a one-for-one -one thing. And you will sound horrible if you try to translate as a one-for-one -one thing. You even have kids in like a classroom calling each other Mr. and Miss, <laughs> which is absolutely insane, you know? And I really was lucky. She didn't turn me into a frog. As I awkwardly stood there, stock still, she motioned to an open chair and urged me to sit down. Have a seat. Welcoming and speaking to those who visit this garden for the first time is my sole pleasure. Of course, I have no pleasures other than that. As she said this, she let an unhappy smile show for just an instant. Because I was full of a strange mix of tension and excitement, I rudely asked her a question all of a sudden. Um, are you the witch of the forest, Beatrice? Indeed, I am Beatrice. As I thought, Beatrice actually existed. Did she really look like the portrait? Yes, really, just like the portrait. So, she wasn't just a witch from Father's imagination. Well, what did you talk with her about? As she prepared some tea, she asked me all kinds of things about myself. First, she was surprised that I'd come through the forest. It seemed she believed that many dangerous wolves lived outside the fence. So, when I told her I'd come through the forest to reach this place, she was shocked. She asked how I'd managed to escape from the wolves. Did I give them a biscuit and they let me go? Or did I cover myself in a magic cloak? That kind of thing. Wahaha. <laughs> that sure sounds like a witch. What an interesting person. 
quiet, dear. This goes way back. But didn't Father threaten us, saying we should never get near the, near the forest because of the wolves that live there? Yes, he did say something of the sort. Ridiculous. Even though Japanese wolves were extinct long ago. And I mean, this is like an island out in the middle of nowhere, too, so it's kind of less likely to be out here, too, I think. Truly a trick to fool children. I don't remember, though. Did Dad really tell us something like that? It was the Witch of the Forest, right? I don't think I've ever heard about wolves. This was when you were still in elementary school. Don't you remember? Back then, you actually said you thought it'd be cool to try petting the wolves. Father immediately gave up the wolf story and changed it to a story about the witch. Seriously, what transparent lies they were. Ha ha ha. At the time, the witch story had a much more immediate effect than you, Rudolph, than the wolves. I remember it well. Don't you remember those nights when you clogged in my back? Made up species? I don't know, it could be, but keep in mind, this is like, what was it, 1986 or something? So maybe back then that kind of thing wasn't well known. Like, if Pluto were to come up in this story, it's still considered a planet back then and not like whatever it is now. I'm gonna keep in mind, it's like 40 years ago now, just about. I see, so even Rudolph's son used to be that cute. Shut up. I was just a kid. Well, at any rate, my father's the one who shut Beatrice up in there. It makes sense that he'd use the same story about the wolves. Yep, dated information. I don't know anything about the Japanese wolf thing, but if that is like a made-up thing that we learned about in recent years, then it's just like good writing details that it's incorrect in here, essentially, because they, they wouldn't have known. To him, the vast forest of Rakenjima was the wall that should be crossed, dividing his two incompatible worlds. He should a family and his mistress's mansion. Considering the height of that fence, it does sound as though Father turned that whole area, garden and all, into a giant jail cell. It's like a border dividing his two separate worlds. Wolves aside, could there have been some breed of stray dogs there at the time? Perhaps the fence was there to protect against those. There aren't any wolves or stray dogs in Rakenjima. That fence was probably a border between us and Beatrice. But if she innocently believed that story about wolves, that's pretty naive. That's nothing like what I'd expect the witch to do. You're right. I sense that too. She was very pompous, just like my image of a witch, but she was somehow very childish. She was, how should I put it, too straightforward. She gave me the impression that she didn't know anything about the world. It was as though she'd come from some fairy tale land. She really was a strange person. What happened after that? Did you end up talking with Dad at all? Yes. Once every few days, usually on an arranged day, but sometimes suddenly, Father would casually appear and they'd drink together, or else take a walk together or something. She said she just happened to be alone on the day I visited. I see. An obvious mistress, you might say. My, my. I don't know how much younger she was, but good for father. What do you mean, good for father? We can be sure this was no indecent relationship. Idiot, there's no way a lover's meeting between a man and a woman wouldn't have some sensuality. What happened next? What did you talk about after that? I'd already introduced myself, so I asked about her. When he did, the atmosphere quickly grew depressing. How should I put it? She seemed to grow listless and lonely. It was that same expression I saw on her face in the beginning. Well, she was his hidden mistress after all. If she just walked around where she liked, Mom might have found her. I'll bet she was probably to later house arrest. Even though she had beautiful clothes, a beautiful mansion, and a garden, she must have felt pretty cramped. I bet she had it rough. And then? She was definitely worried about something. I remember feeling really sad myself when I realized it wasn't something I could do anything about by talking to her. She seemed to forget I was even there. She gazed vaguely off into the distance and was silent for a long, long time. Like X. Oh, no deaths so far. Right now we're getting Beatrice's backstory. We've had a surprising amount of like arguing between Balor and Beatrice considering there's been no deaths so far though. I thought I must have said something wrong, but it didn't seem to be the type of atmosphere where I could apologize. But we now know there is a hidden mansion on Rokenjima, where apparently 20 years or so ago, Beatrice lived. Whatever that really means. And we're getting like flashbacks from Rosa right now regarding that. Rosa also said that she killed Beatrice. This all ties into um, Beatrice not confirming either of Battler's proposed statements in the red. Um, those being uh, repeated in red, there's only 18 people on the island or there's only more. She refused to answer both of those. She's saying Rosa will explain it for her, essentially, as for why she's not explaining. As for why she won't state them. So I remained silent too for a long, long time, and she'll until she remembered I was there. And then she muttered unexpectedly.
Are there really no wolves beyond the fence? Huh? Yes, that's right. I've never seen wolves, not even in a zoo. What is a zoo? Ah, it's a place where they keep all kinds of animals. They're full of rare animals like elephants and giraffes and pandas. So, there aren't any wolves in a zoo? Then, um, it might not be so scary. Even if there were wolves, all the animals are put in cages, so it's safe. That's why you can safely look at them and learn about them. The mighty witch of the forest was apparently terrified of wolves. I remember it looked pretty funny to me, at the time. How am I any different? Huh? She didn't know about zoos. I explained how fun zoos could be, but it was very difficult for a person like her, who had never visited one, to understand. On the contrary, as I explained to her, her expression grew increasingly dismal. She couldn't see the difference. Apparently, even though she lived in an elegant mansion that was surrounded by a high fence and seemed like for nothing, she couldn't see how she was any different from animals shut up in cages. Who am I? Everyone calls me Beatrice. That does indeed seem to be the name of a great witch, as you say. But that isn't me. I cannot use any magic. I simply have the soul of that witch sealed inside my body. There was definitely something odd about her. Beyond just being cut off from the world, it seems she truly believed that magic exists. I think she talked about lots of weird things, but I don't remember the details. All I thought was that this might be a person to be pitied. She was unable to leave this mansion of her own free will, prisoner without even realizing it. And she didn't know anything about the outside world, didn't even understand who she was. She probably vaguely realized that she was to be pitied. But since she didn't know anything, she seemed incapable of recognizing her own unhappiness. Long ago, when I told Naysan that I felt sorry for a bird in a cage, she said this. A bird that only knows about the inside of the cage doesn't long for the outside. But this wasn't a bird. She really was a person. Even if she'd never been outside the cage, she understood that there was more to the world. So, I invited her. You want to try going outside the fence? Th there really aren't any wolves? There aren't. You'll definitely be safe. I want to leave. But the gate is always closed. There's the place I came in through. It's got a crack you can slip through. <coughs> if we go through there, will there be a world outside? Yes. There really aren't any wolves? <laughs> right, there aren't any. I had only planned on inviting her to go on a short walk, but she kept looking over her shoulder at the mansion as though she was seriously worrying over the decision. Then, I wondered what she was preparing herself for. I have had enough of this place. I want to go outside. I want to know who I am, what's happening in this world, and why I was bored. I didn't know what her life had been like before then. It was probably something she couldn't express easily. If it was harsh, she just had to say she wanted to escape. If it was sweet, she just had to say she'd stay. For example, maybe it was like how a hot fireplace on a winter day makes the air get thicker and thicker, giving you a headache. Even though you know you shouldn't keep things the way they are, you still need courage to open the window and be tormented by the cold wind. It's like uh, getting into a hot bath in the winter when there's like such a big temperature difference. Or getting out of a hot bath in the winter, actually. <laughs> that That's probably even better. <laughs> she was starting to realize that she couldn't stay there forever. She was starting to realize that she had to go outside someday. But, since she didn't know about the outside world, she must have needed courage to take that unspeakable first step outside. And despite that, she'd made her decision. She'd voiced her decision to go outside, a decision she was probably making for the first time in her life. I hesitated for a moment. Father decided that she should live here. She was like Father's beloved bird in a cage. If I just let her escape, Father might scold me harshly. I want to see... Hmm? See what? I want to see... Zoo. Ah. I was just a little surprised when she finally gave me a gentle smile. Could that have been a farsightedness brought about by a decision to vent her out from her cage? It was a smile so gentle, I couldn't imagine that it had come from that one's dark face. When I speak with you, I keep hearing about things I don't know. I don't even know about this thing called school, nor do I know about zoos. I don't know about movie theaters. I don't know about amusement parks. And I feel, in the bottom of my heart, that I want to know about those things. Do you take me to see them? Yes. I was nervous about how I could keep it a secret from father, but her face looked so happy, so I went along with her and nodded. But she seemed to not to notice the meaning behind my vague smile. She seemed to believe that I'd really take her to all those places. She was pure and genuine. She'd probably never have been tricked by anyone. No, maybe it's better to say that she'd never learned how to doubt. Her smile was somewhat radiant, and yet pathetic. I wanted to find a way to grant her modest wish. I have had enough, Beatrice. 
I want to know who I am. I want to start out as a new human, not Beatrice. So, I want you to take me away from here. I don't need tea anymore. Yep, this is Beatrice's backstory. At least that, that's how it's being presented. Yep. As long as you trust it. But, I mean, Rosa wouldn't really have a reason to lie, so... I don't need tea anymore. I don't need this dress. I won't meet with Kinzo again. Please, take me from here. Rosa. Essentially, the whole thing is, Battler's saying, okay, if there's a hidden mansion on the island with Beatrice on it, then I can just use Beatrice as, like, a 19th person for all the murders. And I can win all the arguments. Beatrice is saying, well, there's a reason why you can't do that. Let Rosa explain. So, we'll get there. However, that responsibility was one that a child like me couldn't hope to fully bear. Still, when I saw her serious gaze, along with that brilliant smile that made it look as though a possessing spirit left her, I could feel a little courage start to rise up inside me. This was definitely something that would get me into a lot of trouble. And yet, it was definitely the right thing to do. I don't know how it'll turn out, but I'll take her away from here. Of course, I won't be able to talk to father, and not mother either. Should I talk to Onisama or Onesama? No, what about the reliable Genji-san? Or, that's right, what about Kumisawa-san? Who am I going to always talk to when I'm in trouble? I'm sure they'll be able to do something. Anyway, for now, I'll take her out of here. This was already a place she didn't want to be. So I took her to the crack in the fence and let her outside. Then the wolves got her. <laughs> he was all nervous, checking to make sure there were no wolves around. But once that fear disappeared, even just walking around this dense forest seemed to be fun somehow. Every time she found something, she asked me about it. They were all really trivial things. What's that flower? What's that leaf? And that sound? And that smell? It really was like the inside of that fence had been her entire world. So, now that she traveled beyond the limits of her world, it's strange. When I first saw her, I really thought she was the witch herself, relaxing inside the witch's mansion. But now, it was different. Or actually, the complete opposite. She had left a world she believed to be finite, and was overjoyed at the realization that the world was endless, something she never thought of before. So, everything she saw was new. It was almost as though she was the one who had been thrown into a fairy tale. If she was Alice, then I felt almost like a rabbit holding a watch. To her, it was probably a really fun walk, built to the brain with excitement. But I was actually at a loss as to what to do. After all, I walked randomly to get there. Of course, I didn't know the way back to her mansion. There were no lights in the forest, and I hadn't brought a flashlight. I realized it would be terrible if it got dark while we were still like this, and grew impatient. She was too innocent, and apparently, she couldn't understand at all how frightening it would be to face the night inside the forest. But I was the one who brought her outside. I had to take responsibility and somehow and resolve this situation. So, I had a thought. Let's go to the ocean for now. If we then follow the beach around, we should eventually make it back to the mansion. However, that was much more of a problem than I'd imagined. I didn't have a map or a compass. There was no way I could walk in a straight line through an uncultivated forest, and I immediately lost my sense of direction. I already had no clue which trail I had come by, and was completely lost. At this rate, I would definitely fall before I had a clue where to walk. This was no time to cry. No, it was not the time that the sequels cried, not yet. After all, that one falling behind me was so innocent and having so much fun. So I definitely had to lead the way through this forest, for the sake of her smile as well. Putting my teeth so that she didn't see me looking troubled, I pushed my way through the woods, advancing down a path that wasn't a path. Then, after going through various troubles, I unfortunately managed to reach the ocean. At that time, I still didn't even, even have a clue where I was on the island. But for the time being, I was just totally reassured, realizing that if I just went around this way, I would surely be able to return to the mansion. However, though I'd reached the ocean, we were at the top of a rock cliff. The beach was far below us. I was tired from walking around the forest for so long, so I figured that an open area, even a rocky beach, would probably be much easier to walk in. So I suggested that we go down that rocky cliff somehow. It looked pretty dangerous, but I figured there was no other way. However, Beatrice agreed to my plan without any doubts. Even though she was probably older than me, she meekly obeyed almost as though there was some kind of chick who thought I was her mother. I searched to see if there was some part of the cliff I'd be able to get down. Then, I found a place where the cliff had fallen over and made a slope. It looked a little dangerous, but if I went down using both hands and both legs, like it was crawling, I thought I'd probably be okay. Let's go down here. It'll be dangerous if we aren't careful, but if we go down to the beach and walk along it, I don't think we'll have to worry about being lost anymore. Indeed. If that's what you're doing, I'll go too. Even getting lost is fun for me. What I'm using. She really had no sense of danger. There was probably no doubt that she'd lived a life without discomfort. Even though she knew it would get dark when night fell, 
She couldn't imagine how dangerous the inside of the forest could be without a light. I'll do for the cloth for now. I'll keep that up again in a while. <clears throat> Furthermore, it seemed she couldn't grasp at all how dangerous it might be if she fell from the cliff. I warned her repeatedly to be careful. I cautiously examined a potential right down. It seemed to be quite a long drop. I think it might have been about 10 meters down. If you looked at it from the bottom up, it would probably have looked shorter than the roof of the mansion. But looking from the top, it felt almost like staring down from the observation room in Tokyo Tower. But Beatrice still appeared to be complete with a completely without fear. It felt as though she had never even been taught that high places were dangerous. No, maybe she believed that she was a witch, and that she could fly, so there was, wasn't any need to worry. Please be careful. We're pretty high up. Indeed, I shall be careful. Looks like we can get to the ocean if we go down. Is there an aquarium there? No, there aren't any aquariums on this island, but there should be lots of fish in the sea. I see. So there are fish? Are there, um, whales and dolphins and penguins, like you talked about? No, you'd have to go to an aquarium for those. And you'd have to leave this island to find an aquarium. Is that so? Well, I'm looking forward to it. What kind of fish are whales? Um, they're really big fish. Huh? Aren't, aren't they mammals? And they spit seawater into the air. Oh, and dolphins? Um, they're really smart fish. And, oh, aren't they also mammals? <laughs> they're really smart and can be taught tricks and stuff. Oh, then what about penguins? Um, uh, weren't they birds? <laughs> What's going on? We're talking about aquariums, but none of these things seem to be fish. Um, uh, well, there aren't just fish. It's full of all kinds of things that live in the ocean. Oh, really am looking forward to that. Mm. Well, yeah. Do you know what might have been a funny? Rushed in short cry. No, it was probably a scream. It came right out of the blue. Her body separated from the cliff and silently fell. I immediately wanted to say something to her. I wanted to say, didn't I tell you to be more careful? It was the thought of a child. It was how a child immediately gets mad when something bad happens, trying to find an excuse to show it wasn't their fault. Of course I said it out loud. Are you okay? Didn't I warn you over and over? So, she fell from the cliff. And then what? That's quite the question. What happened to her? Rosa. Rosa fell silent. Her gaze dropped to her feet, as though she were seeing through the floor into some disgusting memory. She died, didn't she? Eva's brutal words were the ones Rosa had most wanted to avoid. And when she was hit with them, she screamed in resignation. Yes, she died. It was a rocky beach, with lots of sharp, dangerous rocks exposed. Her eyes were still open, and an incredible amount of blood kept pouring out, quickly spreading out until it looked like a red carpet. It spoke to her, shook her. But she refused to respond, not even a blink. No, she wouldn't even close her eyelids. It was my fault. She was wearing a dress, remember? Even though I knew her outfit was difficult to move in, I said we should go down the cliff. She was incredibly innocent, so she obeyed what I said without any doubts. How long do you plan on remaining dead? Open your eyes already. Darn you turning into a lump of meat all by yourself while I'm gone. I was just floating with your ass nature on friends. More importantly, what the heck's going on here? Well, as you can see, I missed my footing, fell down, and died. What the hell? Even though you showed up as the 19th person, you're already dead? Don't mess with me, that's impossible. Aunt Rosa was a kid, and she was panicked. And it's not like a doctor was there. She probably just mistakenly thought you were dead, and you were probably, um, alive and pretending to be dead, or something. <clears throat> yeah, it does give some extra context to Rosa, like, hating when Beatrice is mentioned. It, you know, it's, it's, it's one more thing you can say that gives a bit more sympathy to the Rose, to the whole Rosa Mario thing. She's like hiding this trauma from everyone. Isn't that right? It can't be true. She's got to be alive. Otherwise, how can she be here? The kid aged Aunt Rosa shook Beatrice's body, crying. I stared into that face too, but her eyes were still open and it really was a corpse. I wanted to dodge the issue by saying something vague, like she must be playing dead. But no matter how I looked at it, it didn't look fake at all. It really did look like she was dead. Uh, just to clarify, this is Bat we're talking here. He's just, like, watching the flashback. <clears throat> this is how this kind of thing works. Beatrice had fallen upside down from the cliff of that height, and her head had smashed against the point tip of those sharp rocks. Yeah, you probably would die after landing on those rocks from that height. 
but I couldn't accept it. No matter how dead she looked, she had to be alive. Then, she wanted to become this damn irritating witch that makes all the inconsistencies fit. Her grandfather must have kept her confined constantly in a hidden mansion. Then, to take revenge for that, she committed several atrocious murders. Aunt Rosa probably just mistakenly thought she was dead, but she was actually alive, and as soon as Aunt Rosa left, she would miraculously breathe again. Then, she somehow lived on until today and opened the curtain on her revenge drama. Otherwise, the facts don't fit together. I won't let you trick me so easily. Can you repeat it in red? That she's certainly dead. She has to be alive, right? It's obvious. How does that look alive to you? It's definitely dead. Just add that. Let's see. Actress. Definitely dead. Reference to herself in Rosa's flashback. It has been added. <clears throat> Alright, easy. Hope the connection gets better. Goodbye. Mm hmm. Player 3, the 19th person was grandfather's mistress. Mistress, a human Beatrice, had been defeated. I had plans to strike back my defensive position, but then who are you? You just died, right? Don't tell me you revived yourself with magic. I've already explained that, have I not? The me lying over there definitely possesses my soul. That body is nothing more than a cage of flesh tying me to the physical world. This is how that cage of flesh was broken. Do you understand what that means? I don't have a clue anymore. Keep having fun with your witch girl tricks. I'll listen to that in place of a snack. What the? It's empty. Hey, could I get some more black tea? Renove, our guest would like some tea. When Beato clapped her hands, Renove appeared. But was sure convenient. A refill, you say? Certainly. How much shall I pour you? Well, I've got more than enough snacks. That will be fine. Even so, filling it to the brim is the English custom. Even though just enough to wet my throat would have been fine, he filled it to the top. I turned my back to Beato, sipping in silence. Time to keep watching the movie. Hey, wake up. Beatrice. Rosa shook me. No, shook the corpse that had once been me. I walked over her from a short distance away. Ah, so I fell from there and died. For a while, I believe that was true. I saw Rosa spend a long time beside my corpse, then watched her as she ran away. Eventually, I realized that it was a different individual from that corpse. That's right. I am me. So, I finally managed to escape from Kinto's bonds. Eventually, I felt the memory returning. The fact that it was an endless witch who had lived for 1,000 years. Then, I remember that I had been summoned by Kinzo, and that I had been imprisoned by him for a long time. While being imprisoned in a cage of flesh, I completely lost my memory as a witch. However, thanks to Rosa, if you could say that, thanks to my accidental death, I had now regained myself. Rosa, you probably regret bringing about my death. I should be thanking you. I couldn't see Rosa anymore. Was she going to call a doctor, or was she so terrified that she ran away? It no longer matters. That soulless shell no longer has any value. And yet, I'm so frail now. Even this glorious midday sun is agony to me. Back to the forest. I destroyed my human form. Then, I changed it into several gold butterflies. Yes, with a magical power as frail as it is now, this form is easier to maintain. To escape even a little from the light of the sun, I rode the wind and gently flew up the side of the cliff. It'll probably be a bit cooler in the forest. Anyway, I'll take some time to recuperate and regain my former power. As I ponder how to make Kinzo pay up all he owes me. Dancing alone through the air, I looked down at the shore one more time. On the rocky shore lay the figure of what had once been me, a figure I would eventually regain. To regain the form of that physical body I had thrown away, it would probably take more than 100, 200 days. It might require 1,000 days, or perhaps even more. However, I'm the Endless Witch, the Golden Witch who has lived for 1,000 years. Waiting any countable number of days would be no problem. Oh, Kinzel, forget that you are not here now. No longer will you be able to capture me. So hey, now we know who Beatrice is. Interesting. There's a lot of Beatrices to keep track of in the story, huh? And then you changed it to gold butterflies, hid in the forest, and waited for your magical power to be restored. Is that what you're saying? I guess I should go back over everything. So essentially the story that we've just been told is, Kinzo used to be in love with a woman called Beatrice. Um, she died somehow. 
uh, rejected his advances, I guess, as well. At one point, Kinzo supposedly acquired a baby or young girl raised her in the forest as Beatrice. Then she died. Because in reality, that was a homunculus that had the witch Beatrice's soul. I don't know. It's, it's kind of a mess. Just keep, keep track of the rough outline, I guess. That is correct. I take this form to sneer at you, but most of the time, it is easier magically for me to keep my form as gold butterflies. Yeah, you feel free to take a load off and stick to whatever's easiest. I wouldn't mind not having to hear your irritating laugh. When I turned into butterflies and slipped into the forest, it was already no longer possible for Kinzo to find me. However, Kinzo was not dismayed. Still, he was not immediately able to prepare a way to catch me. So, he first moved to prevent me from leaving this island, and to keep me from gaining my power. My, my. At any rate, Kinzo's spitefulness was unimaginable. It was pretty tough to be loved by someone like that. He found a way to keep you from leaving after you turned into butterflies? What, did he put a bug net around the entire forest? Indeed. A magical one. Didn't you know? On the sea in front of the harbor is a reef, upon which sits a small shrine of eastern magic. Ah, that. It was gone by this year, though. It was a small shrine built long ago by a Shugenja, right? From the very beginning, Rakenjima has been an island developed by a distortion. It attracts things of magical power and not the related creatures. My lady herself is one of them. How about some more tea? Please. They brought harm to humans and probably left several eerie legends in their wake. That small shrine was built in ancient times by an eastern magician who heard of them. A long time passed, and that power was lost. By repairing it, Ginza restored this island's barrier and once again bound me to the island. In Sokyo? Can eastern magic work on a western witch like you? Normally, the affinity would be poor. However, for the purpose of sealing me here, it may have been quite convenient in a way. If it was western magic, I would have had some knowledge. For a new barrier, there would have been some measures I could have taken. But eastern magic is outside my area of expertise. It was as if I had been given chopsticks instead of a spoon for some soup that I wanted to drink. In a space dominated by eastern magic, western magic loses much of its power. Even if she were given 1,000 days to regain her strength, she would have to wait many, many more. So you're saying it took you 20 years to regain your power, and now you've revived, as we can all see? Those were horribly long years. I spent many days in the form of gold butterflies, found Kinda's mansion, and watched over him every day. I lived through those days with no means to enjoy myself, except to ponder how I would get back at him. That period of 20 years was fortunate for me. Kinzo tried to use all sorts of magic to find and capture me, but each failed. There's a limit to how many miracles a single human can bring about. Even simply holding me captive for that long had been a miracle far above his place. It would be unthinkable for me to be captured like that multiple times. And Father said something in the previous game. It was something like, magic lies in a miracle of probability. Indeed, as Ginza was searching for a hidden art to capture me again, he stumbled upon that. Then, he finally worked at the ceremony, involving the offering of 13 people as sacrifices to revive me again. 13 people as sacrifices. That is the witch's epitaph, a song of sacrifices. Six people in the first twilight, two people in the second, and then five more in the fourth through eighth twilights. A forbidden ceremony, involving the offering of a total of 13 people as sacrifices. Those sacrifices were to be chosen randomly, and the one who held the ceremony, Kinzo himself, was no exception. Dumbass. Are you saying that all the gruesome murders on this island were a weird ceremony? I had a vague idea that this might be the case. Yeah, 18 people die in the end. That's something to think about. We actually don't see how they die at the end. We just know that they die. It always cuts off before that point. But I couldn't just hear that it was true from a witch and a demon and say, Oh really? I accept it? There are 18 people on Rokenjima. 13 are offered to sacrifices, 5 are left alive. Then there are 5. In other words, the odds that Kinzo will be able to meet me again are probably around 1 in 3. He bet his own life on those odds, wishing for a reunion with me for the last bit of his remaining life. Beatrice Blast. You're saying he gathered her family for the sake of that joke of a ceremony? Don't fuck with me. Don't say stuff like that, damn it. It was all set in our contract from the beginning. When Kinzo's life ended, all the gold I lent him and all the assets he created would be given to me. Yes, Kinzo did stab me in the back quite brutally. But looking back now, it was a rare and precious time during my thousand years of life. After all, boredom is my natural enemy. To Kinzo, who offered me a chance to run away from that from, se from that for several decades, Yes, you could say I owe him for that. I decided to go along with Kinzo's game. So to start, 
Kinza returns the Ushimura family head's ring to me. It was my goal that revived the family, after all. Then, 13 people were chosen at random to be sacrifices. While that happens, you all run about, show me all kinds of human interactions as you try to oppose me, and entertain me greatly. Yes, I truly have taken a liking to this game of Kinzo's. So, I mean, we have Beatrice's motive now. We know everything. Assuming she really is a witch, and this is all true. But still, you know. What if UVN's left? We're only partway through three. There's eight. Ah, uh, I definitely won't believe in that kind of magic story. Then who are you? You fell off a cliff and died, right? Your soul slipped out, became butterflies, and went to the forest? That isn't possible. But you're here. Who are you? Aren't you the 19th person? That is true. I am the 19th person. But it's useless, right? It's all useless. Well, she said the line. She said the battle line. There are no more than 18 humans on, on this Rokenjima. Oh, here we go. Here's the big reveal. Only 18. There are no more than 18 humans on this Rokenjima. So, that should help us narrow things down in the future for mysteries. But obviously it means we don't have the option of just inserting an extra person, but having that restriction makes it into a solvable mystery, right? You know, limitations are what give birth to creativity. What what did you say? So you're saying that the X in the 18 plus X doesn't exist? Are you saying the piece they took, the X, doesn't exist? Look who that is what this means. My condolences. Still, you do move fast, my lady. And I thought you'd let him plunder about before spinning everything around at the end. Well, I mean, yeah, having this line is, like, required if you even really want to, like, ping things down to a culprit, right? Oh, then, Valor Sama. Would some more tea be agreeable? I, I don't need it, damn it. I don't believe it. The culprit can't be one of the 18. Then what are you, and why are you here? If the 19th person doesn't exist, then are you saying you're one of the 18 in disguise? Perhaps you are castling. Oh, oh, castling, as in chess. Though reluctantly, you are doubting one of the 18 people as your last way out. However, it will be difficult for me from here on out. If you choose to stop caring about propriety, you could prepare a culprit freely amid 18 people. Making you reach checkmate by evading those 18 pieces will be truly difficult. I'm not very good at chess. Like, I know the rules, but I, I, I don't think I'm very good. <laughs> as if I do that, I don't suspect any of the 18. I don't want to suspect people. I've really been courted here again. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Valor was just saying, like, last stream, that, like, if she said there were only 18, it would suck, but he'd eventually get over it. He'd just have to deal with it, but <laughs> this doesn't look like getting over it to me. It looks, though, we're, looks like we're finally approaching the end in this third round of this game of ours. We haven't even had any deaths yet. You're nowhere to, you've nowhere to run anymore, right? You don't want to suspect any of those beloved people in the 18, do you? Are you trying to hide that from me? Then why do you refuse me? They say you should play the opening like a book, the middle game like a magician, and the end game like a machine. I'll corner you from here on. Slowly, carefully, surely. Or, on the other hand, would it be better if I pressed you all at once? Which might suit your style more. Yes, that should fit you well. Let's do that. I'm now fully aware of the sorts of attacks you're weakest against. Eee. Go on, give him some more red. We want the red. Even if that were might not want it at this point in time. In reality, he does. He just doesn't know it. He was literally, like, saying last time, like, the more red he gets, the better. Ah, uh, we're time skipping through the night, then. Okay. Yeah, the wolves did it. They're they're just uh, you know, uh, human. Let me some water for a sec. Maybe it was a robot. 
no. We're too far on the past for that. What's everyone doing at night? Apparently nothing worth putting text on the screen over. But since we're skipping through the first night, we'll probably see some murders in the morning. As I mean, Echo goes on, usually there's more and more like Battler and Beatrice focus, which is good in my book. Yeah, this might be the last time you see some of these people in this episode. Treasure it. Look, it's her. <laughs> Making a very big deal out of it. Good, it doesn't make us wait for 12 full chimes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ryukishi7. <clears throat> Dragoon7. Well then, how will this game be resolved? You may submit, or you may resist. By the way, it will truly be an entertaining banquet worth betting my short remaining life on. It is deeply lit study, occasionally brightened by lightning. Kinzo kept mumbling and laughing to himself. On the antique clock with the intricate design that had been sitting on his desk, the two overlapping hands tilted to the right and began to slide. A measure of time that counted up to 24 had returned to zero and had begun to come back again. Go to sleep, Kinzo. Wait, wait to see who the mafia kills. Measuring time is a brutal thing. It drags itself all the way to 24 over the course of a day and then returns back to zero. It certainly did count to 2359. However, is it, able to re is it ever able to reach 24? If you conclude that it returns to zero again without reaching 24, how futile it must all be. But perhaps a person's life is the same. You live, aiming for a perfect 24, and at the instant you reach it, you return to zero. People will probably praise the departed, saying that he did reach 24, but he most certainly did not. In the end, he is zero. <laughs> Kinzo's a pessimist, I guess. I am different. I will live and reach 24. That itself is the golden land. For that is where Beatrice dwells. Kinzo had been fumbling around with some tarot cards for some time. It looked as though he was trying to divine his own luck with a contest, to doing it over doing it over every time he didn't like the result. The most forbidden action in tarot reading is trying to predict the same thing twice. To do so ridicules the results of fortune telling, and also desecrates those beings higher than humans that give revelations through the tarot cards. However, Kinzo knew. Tarot cards shouldn't be used twice because, since they're nothing more than a random number generator, reading them twice will naturally cause a different result to appear. Therefore, reading them twice was only forbidden to preserve the tarot cards results. So you're telling me that Kinzo, this old man in like 1986, knows what a random number generator is? <laughs> However, that didn't mean that Kinzo didn't take tarot reading seriously. Kinzo's interpretation of tarot reading was done in a completely different way. That was to repeat the reading, over and over, without giving up in the slightest until he reached the result most favorable to him. The mark he set with this most favorable result would vary, but when he demanded the most favorable result in a strictly literal sense, it was the same as a simple rule of luck, where he seeked an arithmetic miracle. However, Kinzo used miracles of numbers as the basis of his magical power, so this functioned perfectly well as a magical ritual. I mean, yeah, if he knew what he were doing, he would just wait for Toa to look at the camera from the background. In other words, until the result he desired appeared perfectly, he would strive to repeat the tarot readings over and over, with conviction, turning the feelings of his heart into prayers, so that when they reached the heavens, they would be sublimated into results. This was Kinzo's personal magic interpretation. Therefore, even though, even though Kinzo's tarot cards were no different from those generally used, the way in which they were used was completely different, because he's a cheater. Dot 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 dot. Tonight will not go as I thought. Kinzo stopped his hands for a second. He seemed not to be getting the results he wanted. 
On the contrary, bad cards that shouldn't show up so often appeared repeatedly, and continued to interfere with the miracle Kinza wished for. Hmm. Is that how it is? Kinza seemed to have received some revelation that was different from normal. <clears throat> he said of MP. But judging by the unlucky cards scattered across his desk, it was difficult to imagine that the omen had been a good one. For a while, Kinza closed his eyes tightly, pondering something. Then, as the thunder roared, he made up his mind about something, took the telephone receiver, and dialed. It is I. Is Genji there? An urgent matter has come up. Genji, I want you to pretend to be me. Pretend to be me tonight. Die my place. Ah, uh, in front of the entrance hall, Shannon's once burning face had been cooled off by the frigid air. She had thought that George's proposal would surely come sooner or later. It wasn't as though she hadn't prepared herself mentally, and she had answered by nodding. Had she been reckless because of her youth? Should she have thought about her future more seriously? I wonder if my immediate reply made him think of a cheap girl. If I'd at least waited until tomorrow morning, would that have at least shown him I was taking this seriously? Now that she'd actually received the ring, already received the ring from George, she kept fidgeting in embarrassment. I should have done this, I should have done that. As she did, she heard the sound of footsteps splashing through puddles. She immediately chased away the emotions flowing up inside her. Genji Sama? It does swap a lot, yeah, it's it's weird. It's kinda strange how it's written, right? You're just gonna have to deal with it. And Ken can too. I I'm sorry, I have to go back soon. Um She grew stiff, thinking she'd surely be scolded for spending too much time at a secret lover's meeting with George. Shannon, the master told us to come to the study, saying it was urgent. Let us hurry. Huh? Y yes, certainly. What in the world? He said he had a premonition of misfortune. How convenient for him, considering he's the one who started the ceremony. We will enter from the back so that Goda doesn't notice us. Hide your footsteps. Remember that only some of the servants were the, uh, one wing eagle. Maybe with the translation? I can take a look. I need to see which line it was. Uh, here, okay. Let's see. It's not like it's really in a different voice here. The second part here is kind of like quoting her internal thoughts, like, I should have done this, I should have done that, which the English gets just fine. And I suppose... No, I don't know. It doesn't really matter either way. It's not explicitly written in first person, I guess. No, it, it doesn't. It doesn't use either. I mean, if anything, the fact that it uses third person in the other lines it's supposedly saying Shannon means it would have made more sense. But I guess maybe, like, because of the subject matter here, if she'd at least waited until tomorrow morning, would that have at least shown him that she was taking this seriously? Sounds kind of weird, right, as narration? I don't know. I don't know why it sounds weird, but I, I guess I kind of get it. I just put steps. Yes. Nason, take care. Talaxia, yeah, maybe. So keep in mind that only some of the servants have the one wing eagle. Uh, let's see. Kitty Kitty supports the Talax, I think. It at least has bold. They've, they've been using bold so far. Maybe it's just a stylistic choice. I don't, I don't know. I feel like the engine supports it. Actually, no, I guess it's it's, it's on script, or I, I think it's related to Kitty Kitty, but I forget. Offhand. The yeah, engines kind of suck. And was especially good at hiding his footsteps. Just like a cat. He's able to suddenly be there without anyone noticing him leaving the same way. Um. I don't know, sometimes, maybe? The thing is, keep in mind, Minako doesn't have, like, a custom-made engine. It uses a pre-existing engine. And I mean, like, words exist for italics in Japanese, at the very least. For example, even though he stepped in puddles, the sound he made was far smaller than that of the rain hitting him. A lot of the time, no, it's not Renpy. 
Uh, it's made in a pawn scripter, which is like a shoot off from on script, I think, which I want to say is a shoot off of TV or something. I forget exactly how the relationship is. A lot of the time, instead of italics, Japanese uses um little uh, little dots above stuff for emphasis. And uses them kind of differently than we would expect. It's strange. Genji also had abilities of that kind. Rather, those servants called Kurdish were supposed to be like that. Just like our deaths and closets go unnoticed by members of the family, these servants also held that as a great virtue. they just suddenly be wherever they were needed. Compared to that, Shen's footsteps still strongly asserted themselves. She was also trying to hide her footsteps. But compared to Kanan and Genji, well, you could say she was a little more boisterous. Eventually, they reached the back door, and the three of them entered the mansion. Immediately, they thought they felt something. It was different from a sense of smell, and it seemed to hit the depths of their noses. Don't forget, real. Uh, fantasy made Moors is made in Game Maker. Isn't that fucked? <laughs> it's incredible. This started to describe the sensation, which you might call sixth sense, and allowed them to perceive that something's different from usual. Genji sama. Indeed. Let us hurry. That sensation made it feel as though a tense something was pressing in around them. Realizing that, the three of them dashed up the stairs, heading for Kinto's study while still heading the footsteps. When they dashed up the stairs, that smell of sweet poison peculiar to Kinzo's study reached their noses. Hmm. What is it, Genji-sama? The barrier is dead. Yeah, I, I guess you can just get get it as a tattoo. Uh, Goda doesn't have it either. He's new. Goda and Kumasawa both are missing the, the eagle. It's just these three that have it. It's kind of surprising that Kanan has it because he's he's like fairly new, right? Like, he hasn't been there for six years, at the very least, because Battle didn't know him. I forget exactly how long he's been there, but... Yeah, I don't know. I would assume... I mean, I guess if it's like a proper tattoo, like, what happens if you get fired? Like, I assume you have to get rid of it. I guess you can remove tattoos. I don't know what tattoos were really like back in the day, honestly, though. I don't know. Huh? Ah. After hearing Kanan's words, she looked at the door to the study. A scorpion pattern was engraved on the doorknob, a powerful ward against magic. The final barrier which protected Kinzo himself. It had been broken. Of course, there was no change to the doorknob that the eye could see. However, those who could understand things people couldn't perceive were able to recognize that a dramatic change had occurred. It, it actually doesn't really like make sense how the standards for like um getting the eagle and like being close to Kinzo are. Because Kumasawa's been working there for a long time, right? And I actually no, I get it's it she's a part timer, I guess. Even though she's been there for a long time. So I guess that's why. Well, in their case, they they supposedly came from the orphanage. Genji's case, I don't know. He's just been there a long time, I guess, and his work full time. Master. Master. It is Genji. Please open the door. Genji called in this way after knocking several times, but there was no answer from the study. Shannon, guard our backs. Cannon, search inside the room. Yes. See, Kusawa was working for exposure. <laughs> Cannon put his ear against the door, searching for presence inside the study. To protect the backs of the pair watching the door, Shannon faced the other way, ready for the unexpected. The master must be in here, but it's too quiet. Do you mean to say he's safe? No, it's too quiet. <laughs> Could it possibly be? Master, excuse us about the door. Genji pulled a gold key out of his pocket. It was the only key to the study that existed, other than the one Kinzo held. He stuck it in the keyhole and turned it heavily. At first glance, that seemed to prove that it was a sturdy lock. However, now that the barrier had been destroyed, this door might as well have been left open from the viewpoint of anyone with magical power. The heavy sound just now meant that the door had been opened even for humans. Excuse me. Jitsurishimasu. As Genji respectfully bowed his head, and Kenan's sense of tension grew hot, tighter, and Shannon trembled, they entered the study. See, it's fine. They immediately discovered Kinzo's figure. He was sitting on the reception sofa so his back faced them. Genji noticed the person sitting across from him and again bowed deeply. Kenan also noticed that person, but he didn't bow his head. He stood in front of Shannon and spread out his arms, blocking the way to her. So without even seeing that person's face, Shannon already had a good idea who it was. So, you have come, Beatrice Sama. Kenji, is it? You came very quickly. Yes, it is always best when furniture answers to the master's call quickly. Unlike this person. 
so Rodebe saw as come as well. Genji directed his greeting towards the thin darkness behind and to the right of Beatrice, where there shouldn't have been anything. Even Conan and Shun would have never imagined that someone was there. However, the darkness responded immediately and praised Genji's eyesight. As usual, you don't disappoint. It has been quite some time. Still, you've grown old, haven't you? Have so many years truly passed you by? My days have been full and satisfying. It appears you've been living quite a full life yourself, what have I saw? Yes, thank you. And Shannon, it has been a long time since I last saw you as well. You've grown quite beautiful. And it seems that you've grown quite strong. That is fortunate. Thank you very much. Hey, son, who in the world? This will be our first meeting, Kanan Kun. I, Renove, have been entrusted with the position of Beatrice Summer's head furniture. I'm an old friend of Genji san's, and I'm also furniture, just like you. Although the master I serve is different. The tent's color didn't disappear from Kanan's face in the slightest. Depending on the master furniture serve, they might be kind or brutal or anything else. If this person couldn't be furniture serving the hated Beatrice, then he must be despicable as well. It seems I'm thoroughly despised. It's as though you hate everything that has anything to do with me. Beatrice openly sneered at Kanan's hate-filled face. Then Kanan finally realized. Beatrice and Kinzo were having a chess game across the reception table. But Kinzo hadn't even quivered. He was holding his head with both hands, his eyes closed tight, as he com contemplated his next move. And actually, I don't know why Kanan hates Beatrice this time around. Like, I, I'm not sure if the stuff with um, Shen Break the Mirror happens in this one or not. It, it might. I'm not sure if that always happens or not. <coughs> like, all that was what led to, like, Kanan and Shannon meeting Beatrice and whatnot, and Kanan hating her and, and all that stuff. Or was he in anguish? Master, I have told Kinzo two things. There was good news and bad news. The good news is that he'll have the good fortune of being reunited with me before the ceremony ends. The bad news is that Kinzo has been selected as the very first sacrifice in the ceremony. There's absolutely nothing I can do about it, because it truly was decided by the fickle roulette. But liar, we know you're just a murderer who kills for fun. Stop it, Ken Kun. So, Kinzo, isn't it about time you decided to accept your loss? With this, our long contest is at an end, yes? At a glance, it was hard to make up the situation on that chaotic chessboard. However, judging by Kinzo's anguish and Beatrice's malicious confidence, it seemed to be over already. It is unavoidable. Perhaps even this could be amusing. It is to me too. Resolving my contest with you may bring a flood of emotions, but it has already surpassed love and hate. It was fun. These past few decades certainly weren't boring. Beatrice advanced her queen and made her final move. And that decided it. Checkmate. This is my final tribute to you. Without any reservations, sleep. <laughs> wow. Ah ha ha ha. Kinzo suddenly stood up and laughed like an opera singer, facing a full crowd and spreading his arms, as though he had succeeded in a century-long plan. That laugh was back crimson. Crimson flames poured out from inside him, spitting even out of his mouth, ears and nose, and all at once his body was wrapped in hellfire. But Kinzo kept laughing. The more he laughed, the more the hellfire spewed from his entire body and began to char him. Those flames became a brilliant light which dazzlingly shone on the various magic tools throughout the room, making the distorted shadows dance across the walls. Those shadows looked like the dead in hell, watching over Kinzo in ecstasy as he burned. And, for, the, for one who had made a contract with the witch, it was an extremely fitting end, in accordance with those terms. After laughing and howling in the roaring flames for some time, for a some time, Kinzo flopped to the ground, as though he was a puppet whose strings had been cut. Kinzo did not, in fact, become a big shot. <laughs> Those incredible blazing flames disappeared as though he'd been completely burned up, and afterwards nothing remained but a festering and burnt corpse that one could hardly bear to look at. Horrible. Pretty hidoi. Hm, you should talk. As if you didn't think that was a fitting way for him to die. Why have you shown yourself? You have some business with us? Stop it, Kevin Kun. You mustn't provoke Beatrice, huh? It would seem you of them absolutely terrified. Goo -goo -goo. I imagine I'll never get along with Kanan. Hey, it's not as though I dislike you particularly. Beatrice grinned. Kanan violently averted his gaze, obviously unhappy. His reaction was so different from what he wanted to do that it made the witch and her butler laugh. Kanan, you stand in the presence of Beatrice Sama. Carefully consider your manner of speech. Oh, I care not, Genji. Let him say what he pleases. I am gracious. How are you gracious? I am always gracious to those who are about to die. 
kind of was taken aback by that creepy laughter. Beatrice wasn't here just to take Kinzo's life. The first twilight required six sacrifices. Kinzo alone wasn't nearly enough. And they just casually walked in here. Fear not, Kenan. It isn't as though you'll be selected as sacrifices just because you came here. After all, you were called here because you'd been selected already. What? Their instincts were good enough to spot her meaning instantly. Since sacrifices were required for the first twilight. After Kinzo, how many more would you need to add up to six? In this mansion, the number five instantly made them think of the number of servants here. Is that what you desire? Indeed. Thank me, furniture. Tonight, your days of suffering will finally end. You ought to thank me for coming here to tell you this. Certainly. If that is your desire. Genji-sama. Genji had agreed to the witch's heartless announcement with his usual demeanor, without raising an eyebrow. Now that the master is dead, Beatrice-sama is our master. Responding to her demands shall be our final duty. Shannon, Ganon, you have done well serving until today. The hard work is now over. As I expected to be Genji. As your fellow furniture, I'm proud to have known you. Shannon, do you have any objections? No. I heard that George Summer gave you a ring. You still say that you have no regrets? Yes. That blessing was more than the furniture deserves. Just receiving the ring has already satisfied my feelings. That's why Goda wasn't invited. The scene would have gone down differently. Ben couldn't take quite as much of a philosophical view as Genji. There probably were regrets left in her heart. She probably wanted to spend a little more... Oh. <laughs> Startled me. <laughs> oh, he's just gonna be in there, there in the corner the whole time, huh? Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. He, he's just there now. He's part of the. He's part of this. <laughs> uh. She probably wanted to spend a little more warm time with the person she cared for, Zoji. But she realized that she released herself from that. She took a single deep breath, and a blank expression rose to her face. Very well. It does surprise me a tad to find that you've gained such composure. Jenin. It seems you too have taken a philosophical view as furniture. Won't you at least shed some bitter tears for not being able to spend the night with a man you love? What a boring woman. This feeling cannot be understood by the likes of you, Beatrice Saw. If you desire our lives, please accept them. We will solemnly carry out that duty. Very well. It's only put. Kukukuku. Just the type of person Beatrice Sama can't handle. She put up a lot more fight last time. Things are going differently this time. She's been taking such a far-sighted view of things lately. I must have tormented her too much last time. Speaking of which, didn't I do the same to Battler? Hmm. Am I still soft? Or is this the way I, or is the way I corner them lacking? In any case, she's just no fun. However, it seems you will still entertain me, right? Canon. Canon Kun. Compared to the two who had taken a far-sighted approach, there was a painful anguish on Canon's face. Canon was still far too young to accept his demise after being told it by a suddenly appearing witch. Canon, I hate boredom more than anything. The fact that the other two have obediently accepted their deaths isn't amusing at all. So I hope you don't betray my expectations. Are you trying to make me your plaything? Canon realized that he was being provoked. However, no matter how furiously anger spurred him on, his opponent was a witch. He was furniture. He hadn't had a chance of victory from the beginning. But the witch was expecting that he'd struggle in vain and ride the band. He was even looking forward to it. Just thinking about that was frustrating enough to get his blood boiling. Was disappointing the witch by refusing to resist, like the other two? The only way he could strike back at her? Eldest of the Seven Sisters of Purgatory, Lucifer, arise. Lucifer of Pride, right here. Canon, it would be far too cruel the first furniture to fight a witch. No matter how much anger spurs you on, you would have no hope in a battle without a chance of success. Hold on, I'm gonna go pee before we get whatever this is. Be right back.
Did forget the red truths. Sorry about that. We haven't hit like any big mysteries to debate yet anyway, but yeah, I'll try next time. Okay. Cannon, it would be far too cruel to force furniture to fight a witch. No matter how much anger spurs you on, you would have no hope in a battle without a chance of success. Of course, such a battle would be boring for me as well. So, would it be furniture against furniture? Why not resolve it with a battle between you two? That should be enough to allow you some hope for victory, right? Forgive me, Beatrice Summer. We could have like an edit of that, that picture of someone throwing a chair at that like Starbucks worker. And the chair should be canon, and the worker, like, parrying it should be Beatrice. <laughs> Forgive me, Beatrice Summer, but how could I be inferior to this good for nothing furniture? As if this cutie would have any chance against me. <laughs> mm. Prove that you can defeat my furniture, the seven stakes of purgatory. If you manage to win through, let us see. I will let you select the five who will escape becoming one of the thirteen sacrifices. I will welcome you the five you recommend into the Golden Land without any conditions. How about that? Ken understood that he was being provoked. However, the witch's offer was very tempting. By this point, Ken couldn't care less about this evil ceremony the witch and the rest were trying to carry out. On the contrary, it was much more important that he remain alive so that he could be invited to the Golden Land and have his witch granted by Beatrice there. You cried, saying you'd had enough of being a furniture, right? I shall grant your desire. I shall give you that human body you wanted so much you cried yourself to sleep. What do you say? That way, you and Jessica could be together, yes? Oh, just perfect. You may recommend that Jessica and yourself be invited to the Golden Land. If you alone finding happiness isn't a satisfying solution for you, then you can add in Shannon and George, the one she loves. If you're worried about duty, then you can also add Genji. Oof. That's five people. Isn't that enough, Cannon? With this much of a reward? You won't let me get bored, will you? She's just playing with you. There's no need to listen to her. I, I don't like it. Are you okay with this, Nason? Beatrice couldn't hide her evil smile at those words. I don't like it. I want to be happy. I've had enough of being furniture. I want to become human and have normal love. I want to know that the ocean's blue like you. How young. I'm jealous. That's why I like the young ones. Genji, Shannon, stay back. Canon, Lucifer, forward. As you command. <clears throat> I don't like it. That way you look down on me. As a Beatrice, some would be impossible. But with me, at least you'd have a chance. I really don't like it. <clears throat> it was probably humiliating for Lucifer. But at the same time, she was also happy that she was, she was lucky enough to have this adorable prey all to herself. Come, furniture of the witch. Don't think that you can look down on me forever. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the manga, objectively speaking, is better drawn, but there's a lot of charm to the original VN graphics. And in my case specifically, I read the VNs back in the day with the original graphics, so there, there's something that I have a lot of nostalgia for. I'll switch to the, the other graphic option in here in a moment to show you what it's like, but it's kind of ugly in my opinion. You can switch to the, uh, the, the pachinko machine art, which I don't like. The PS3 art isn't that bad. Oh yeah, if you switch to this art, it has like a different icon here. I guess that's kind of nice. You yeah, actually see the goat space. I, I do like that. I think that's nice. PS3 does look good. Yeah, it's a shame it's not like an option by default here. You have to like mod it in. I guess at all, I'm like, uh, Gen Genji looks pretty good. Battler, no. Beatrice, no. And these are the most important characters to get right, and I don't like how either of them look. Some of the characters aren't that bad. Ava looks hideous. I, I guess Kitty is basically spot on, more or less. Kinzo, that, that is not Kinzo. That does not look like Kinzo to me. Kinzo needs to have his small face, you know? He has to have... Yeah. The, the face just needs to be shaped the same, and it just isn't there. Grass looks- some of them just look like different people entirely, right? I just don't like it. I just don't like it. I, I can't get used to it. I'm used to this. I'm used to this. <laughs> so, Battler, 
Isn't this a fun show? Damn it. Another weird thing is happening. I don't think I'd ever believe in a magic battle. Well, if you're watching it. Look, look, don't turn your eyes away. Look at it. Look, look, look. It's magic. It's furniture. No matter how much you try to deny, try to deny me magic. Look, 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 look. If you've got all this happening right in front of you, it would be a waste to miss it, don't you think? Look, look, look. Just stop thinking. Magic exists. This is fantasy. Don't close your eyes. Look closely. Look, 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 look. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. I want to accept witches. I want to accept magic. What if it's being done right in the open like that? What am I supposed to say? Damn, damn it. Come now, don't turn away. Look closely, okay? Magic exists. This is fantasy, so stop playing detective. I know your secret. You actually don't really like to think things through, right? Then just stop. Stop. Look, look, it's gotta be fantasy. Gotta be fantasy. Maniacal laughter. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Don't talk to me. This guy's getting stubborn. Won't you apologize and crawl on the ground right now for being so conceited that you thought you could beat me? If you did, I wouldn't mind forgiving you, okay? Then you wouldn't have to have your skin ripped off while you're still alive. Or get lashed all over your body as you squirm until you die. You're a cutie, so apologize. If you do, I'll finish you off so, so gently while it still feels great. Be silent, furniture of the witch. I have no intention of speaking with you. So, so you're saying you think nothing of me? <laughs> that disrespectful gaze of yours is really ticking me off. Oh, I think I remember what happened in the scene now. Cannon Kun. Isn't he stronger than he was against against Satan? This is why humans are so frightening. In fact, sometimes they even become witches and treat demons as butlers. Coo -coo 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 -coo. So which should I cheer on? Are you saying this guy's on par with me? Don't look down on me. As long as you have that pride, you'll never defeat me. You 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 speak of Lucifer, the eldest of the seven stakes of purgatory, and say that I cannot win? Uh, how conceited. <laughs> I love these corny little segments. Like, you can't have this with, like, such try-hard art like the, the pachinko art. It just doesn't work, right? Actually, I don't know. Like, let's see. It, it's just not right. It's just not right. What? Ken was desperately trying to stay alive, and he had a strong desire to become a human. But Lucifer didn't feel anything stronger than a slight desire to play. So that led to an inevitable result. It was a result that could be reached by the power of humans. The power of the heart. That's as far as you go. You cannot win against me. The glowing red curve extended straight out of Ken's arm, pointing at Lucifer's throat just beneath the tip of her chin. What? What is this? How could I... There must be some mistake. As she grinds her teeth in irritation, she tried to deny the truth right before her eyes. But no matter how much she believed in her own superiority, it didn't change the facts right in front of her. Oh, well done, Kenan. Wonderful, you have bored me. How pitiful my furniture is compared to that. Lucifer, you are boring, my lady. Was this opponent really too much for you to handle? I'm disappointed, eldest of the seven stakes. Ah, uh, yeah. It would have seemed like more mere rebuke to an outsider. However, furniture serving the witch knew what kind of severe treatment was promised by their rebuke. And understood what had been left and said. Wah, you good for nothing furniture. She howled. Stakes and sisters? Uh, I mean. It's essentially the, the same thing. I assume they both get mentioned. Yeah, here it's seared stakes. Yeah, they're, they're, they're just interchangeable. She howled, abandoning her last bit of pride, she made her body explode, exposing her true form. That form was a demon state, which bounced off the walls surrounding the room. How could you shame me so much? Kill, 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 you blockhead. Even though you can't even follow my movements anymore, I don't play around anymore. I'm seriously mad, I'll pierce, you, pierce your heart in one blow. I'll plow right through you, make a fountain of red, red, red blood reach the ceiling. Die! Yep, I'm sorry to man spot on with that. That's not even really a spoiler or anything, it's just clearly what the game has shown. Cannon gun. Dakota's just watching. After flying about wildly for some time, with the speed approaching the units of what a human eye could follow, Lucifer flew at Cannon's heart. She could tell that it was Cannon's blood by the sweet taste of it, but she quickly noticed one thing. She hadn't pierced his heart. Oh. This is why humans are frightening. Would you like some black tea? I'm fine for now. 
This is amusing. So amusing I don't even need any. Cannon gun. You were arrogant again. I told you that you wouldn't be able to defeat me. The floor was stained with dripping blood. It really was Cannon's blood, but it wasn't flowing out of his chest. He sacrificed his own left hand to protect his heart. Well, yeah, I mean, anyone would. He used to play dodgeball during a uh, youth group as a kid. And we had rules where, like, if one of your limbs got hit, uh, you couldn't use that limb anymore. You had to, like, keep it behind your back. Same thing with, like, your legs. But if you got hit in the chest, you lost. So the obvious trick is just, as long as you still have your arms, you just hold them out in front of you, and you lose your arms instead. No one else really did it. Well, I think people started doing it after I started doing it. I was probably a miserable kid metagaming youth group dodgeball. <laughs> but, yeah. That is what I did. Lucifer was arrogant. Even though she'd been given enough time to realize that this was an opponent capable of cornering her, in her pride, she believed him to be worthless. She had gotten careless. So, just as she'd announced she had aimed for his chest trying to pierce his heart. Because she was arrogant, she hadn't even thought of aiming for somewhere other than the place she'd announced. No, maybe she had thought about it a little. However, her pride would not allow her to aim for a different spot. After all, she was Lucifer of Pride. Cannon, withstanding the pain, grasped the demon's stakes taking deep into his left hand, strong away with his right hand, and pulled it out. And sure, the sound of breaking bones and even more blood dripping down, Shen looked away reflexively. There was an air hole in the back of the pierced hand so big you could clearly see through to the other side. And his face was filled with pain, but right now, he had won, without a doubt. The demon stake was gripping with his right hand and turned back into Lucifer again. So that now, so the kin was now gripping exactly where her neck was. Gah! Yes. It's my victory, Beatrice. Kenan didn't hold back at all with the hand gripping Lucifer's throat. She challenged him again after the fight had already been decided. Kenan had no obligation to be considerate. But even so, Kenan released the witch's furniture. Was it his naive humanism, his pity for another furniture, or a final bit of respect to the witch? In any case, when she was released, Lucifer fell. Lucifer fell face down on the ground, retching and moaning over the pain in her throat. Spectacular, Kenan. Your great efforts have proven the correctness of some of Kinza's research. Anubi was clapping his hands. To Kenan, who had run at great cost and had a wound on his left hand that wouldn't close, Anubi's applause only felt like mockery. All possibilities dwell within the human heart, was it? My, my, this is why humans are frightening. Well done, Kenan. You were victorious. Spectacular. Ah, ah, ah. Are you okay? Kenan couldn't. Shen ran up to him and wrapped a handkerchief around his left hand, which was still spring blood. That was incredible, Cannon. Truly incredible. Even I was hoping, at least a little, for an upset. That you didn't let me down makes you truly splendid furniture. I think better of you now. I honestly think better of you. You, you haven't forgotten our promise, right, Beatrice? Indeed. Of course I haven't forgotten. Witches and demons may be inhumane. However, we are much more noble than humans when it comes to keeping promises. I will not go back on my word. I guarantee that if you won, I would give you the right to decide the five people who will escape becoming the 13 sacrifices. Be Beatrice Summer, it's not like I've... What? If... When Beatrice waved her pipe, heaven and earth turned over just for Lucifer. So, as a horribly natural result, she fell onto the ceiling. The ceiling doesn't seem that high to people standing on the floor. However, people who fall on it upside down and head first usually don't agree. My lady, isn't that a little much? Perhaps you are right. I suppose I'll forgive her. Beatrice waved her pipe again. When she did, the magic that had been affecting Lucifer was released. So, as a horribly natural result, this time she fell properly back onto the floor. Hmm. Beatrice, some forgive me. What are you so afraid of? I've already forgiven you, haven't I? So, Cannon, shall we continue? Continue what? You aren't saying you want me to finish her, are you? Ah, no, no. It isn't over yet, right? What is it? Stop dodging the question. I did promise you your, to your reward, didn't I? If you could defeat my furniture, the seven stakes of purgatory, right? Come, rise, the seven stakes of purgatory. The sits younger sisters of the worthless elder sister. Sits laughs at once. Oh, what a dumbass. Hey, this is the most sprites we ever see on screen at once. Actually, that's probably not true. We probably see seven sisters at one point. This is pushing the engine to its limits. They are split with shrill laughter, and as a gold splash scattered about, the remaining six sisters 
six sisters of purgatory showed themselves. All the seven sisters of purgatory were here, after Kenna was able to defeat one only by sacrificing his left arm. By now, Kenna regretting his thoughtlessness and accepting the witch's challenge. Yeah, he's got immense pain, so all of his stats are reduced to zero. I know just how bad that is. You don't want to fight in that, in that state. You'd be foolish to assume that a game against a witch would be on an even footing. Lame. Hey, Sama, why are you calling him for? You, you people. Mm. I told you, Nesam is useless. Even though she acts like she's so great just because she's the oldest, that's only the outside. Yeah, seriously. Most of her Nesam, your disgraceful behavior will damage the reputation of us all. Know your shame, you novice. Mm. Ganon Kun, that was totally awesome. But don't get cocky, okay? Most of her Nesam braggers all the time, but she's no big deal compared to the rest of his sisters. That's why I'm always saying Most Rene shouldn't do anything. Still to keep bragging all the time. After all, those of us with talent can handle all the tough jobs. What are you going to do, Ine Sama? Out of respect for your pride, you were planning to stay out of your way in the hopes that you challenge him again in that beat up body of yours. But Kenan Kun sure is strong, right? Right now, no matter how much you struggle, there's no way you could win, right? You, you people. My, my, you sisters are always so lively. Is the city time to fight amongst yourselves? It's only together that you're the seven stakes of purgatory, correct? Now play nice, and that's get the tasks I give you. And swiftly, okay? Hey, this is Renee Sama. If you want to borrow the power of your little sisters, then say it, okay? We want to hear you ask us for help with your own mouth. Do you plan to mock me even more? I, the foolish, weak, ugly, and shameful, who's where the eldest sister, beg my younger sisters to save me. Come on, let's hear it. If you let us hear that, we'll save you, okay? Everyone? You. Bitch. The Seven Sisters of Purgatory unanimously closed in on the worthless sister, abusing her. Even Cannon, who had been fighting for his life until a second ago, couldn't bear to look at it. A as if, as if I could say something like that. Quickly now. Clearly, we won't make any progress here with you alone. Hurry up, let the Seven Sisters strike Cannon. Coo -coo -coo -coo. My, what is the matter, Lucifer? This is an order for my lady, is it not? How cruel. After grinding her teeth over and over, after hearing his sister's curses, Lucifer trembled all over, and answered her sister's request. I, I the foolish, weak, ugly, what? And shameful. And shameful, Lucifer, the eldest sister, beg. Ah. She literally could not do it. The girl noticed pride was finally able to in unable to endure the words she was saying, and broke down crying. However, the six younger sisters kept giggling cold-heartedly. Physically unable. Wait a sec. Don't try to trick us by crying. You haven't finished saying it. That should be enough. Come, sisters. Let us display our power. Don't be satisfied till you hear the whole thing, okay? Come on, come on, Renesama. Keep going. That's enough. Come on. The shame affects us all. We won't let them leave here alive. Okay. How should we play with this pitiful furniture? Any wonderful plans? Y yes, yes. Gales thinks the seven of us should get along and split Kenan up between us. Good idea. That way all the sisters can get along. Then I'll take the head. I'll leave the limbs and guts to you all. No, no, no. I get the head. There's no way that promise will mean anything, right? First one there wins. Hee hee hee. Kenan couldn't. If you've got any ideas for how we should kill you, just tell us, okay? The seven sisters will kill you in an awesome way. Damn. Arg. You've shamed me so deeply. Slicing you into eight pieces won't be enough. I'll slice you into a hundred pieces. Here we go, everyone. Engine crashes. Yes, so day summer. Yeah. The seven of them burst at once. They had no intention of playing or boasting. This time, they would genuinely follow their master's order. Take Kenna down, swiftly. The seven sisters jumped around the room faster than the eye could see, examining how they could best kill Kenna. They tortured Kenna with their cruel giggles, sometimes making a close pass at him. They kept scraping his arms, shoulders, and cheeks, gradually carving red letters into his body. At that moment, Shannon dashed up to him, holding on to him so that she blocked the way to his body at least a little. She's gonna try at least. At the same time, a red cylinder wrapped around the two of them, like a beam of light sent from heaven. That cylinder repelled the evil ones who tormented Cannon. What? You're mean. This has nothing to do with you. 
It's a shonen, but because Beatrice says it's a shonen. Ah, I see. You must want to play with us. Yaha, then I'll take it. All mine. Beatrice Sama, can we take Shannon as our prey? Hmm? Ah, oh, I don't mind. Do as you like. It seems Kenan alone won't be enough to satisfy your gluttony. You have our deepest gratitude. Come on, I'll make you regret coming out uninvited. I'll turn you into scraps of meat so unrecognizable you won't be able to tell which is which. Mix you and mix you and mince you into hamburgers. And yet, breaking that barrier should come first, right? Don't let your gluttony get in the way of your job. Yes, Sunday Sama. As a horribly natural first action, the Seven Sisters began to destroy the barrier Shannon had created. Shannon's barrier certainly was strong, but it was powerful enough to impress even Beatrice. With the strength, real furniture would turn to dust just by touching it. And it was firm, like a tree with deep roots. But no matter how big a tree gets, it will eventually surrender to a saw or an axe. With the Seven Sisters, chopping down, Shannon's barrier would be annoying, but not impossible. I mean, yeah. They got through last time, after all. This is not the first time this has happened. The sound of, like beetles jumping about beetles grew even fiercer and filled the room. Better butter beetle battle. Red barrier began to be cut up and eroded away as though with an axe. A saw. No, a chainsaw by now. <coughs> How foolish. Even though you must know that your barrier can't fully really protect you from these girls. Why? Because I couldn't overlook it. As Shannon covered Cannon, who was already at his limits, sprawled on the floor, she spoke back. She spoke back resolutely. If you wouldn't barged in uninvited, I would have given you a death like sleep. Why have you gone to all the trouble of exposing yourself before the Seven Sisters? Not all deaths are the same. A cruel death will cause you far more anguish than me really dying. Go ahead, do as you like. Just as you always do what you want, I did what I wanted. Hmm. At any rate, you're not quite amusing at the present moment. Romance is most interesting when you're wondering whether it will succeed or not. Once it does succeed, a woman is like Salmon who has finished laying his eggs. I've already tired of you. Thank you. No words from which would make me happier. Haha. <laughs> then at least in the end, let me see you die in a truly entertaining manner. Seven sisters, can you hear me? Kill Shannon in a way that shows me the limits of brutality. Shannon. My apologies. In the end, I wasn't able to reach your level, Genji Sama. You're an idiot, Nason. If you just let me be, then you might not have had to meet a horrible end. No, it's fine. I received the ring from George Sama and lived as a woman. I protected you and lived as a sister. With this, my life is complete, with no regrets. Mmm, you're pissing me off. That philosophical take really is irritating. Like I said, your furniture couldn't even smell like a human. Look at me. I am a human. Don't spout off philosophical crap like you're more complete than I am, your furniture. Wow, Beatrice called herself a human. How ugly. Are those regrets what you truly are? They aren't regrets. They aren't a regrets. This is called living. <laughs> you really gotta, like, proof free the important scenes. What's this about not minding if you die just because you were given a ring? Uh, I can't understand it. It's incomprehensible, disappointing, outrageous, stunning. It's all useless. My lady, perhaps you're acting a tad undignified. That's my water. Don't touch my water. <laughs> Shut up, furniture. Shannon, do you think I want you to die so easily? Now's the time to bite your tongue. How pitiful. If you can see yourself reflected in my eyes, then shudder at your unugliness. Fear not. Once I've crushed you up, you'll be much more ugly even while you still live. At that time, Genji softly entered the red barrier. Perhaps that barrier didn't block those without ill intent. Then, Genji held, gently held her from behind, and covered her eyes with his right hand. Genji-sama, you've already done enough. Go to sleep before me. Yes. Thank you very much, Genji-sama. Indeed. After that, Genji softly pressed his left hand near her collarbone. As he did, emanating from that area, the crimson stain gently spread out. Yeah, we haven't seen Genji's ability yet. Because of course, naturally, Genji has to have an ability too. When Genji removed his hand, bright red, fresh blood oozed out of there. It only happened for the first instant, and was shaped like a crimson rose. Let's go to his ability. He doesn't have the, the one-winged eagle. He doesn't have an ability. He doesn't count. And when he removed his right hand covering her face. See, he's, he's not one of Kinzo's furniture. He's just a random-ass guy who works for the, the family. There was a peaceful expression there, as though she was sleeping. Then she fell softly, silently, and slept. Her soul had already been sent to a world where the malicious witch and her furniture could not reach her, no matter how evilly they tortured her. 
See, Genji can essentially put people to sleep. The scene left Beatrice and the Seven Sisters stunned. Only Runabe wore a mysterious smile. Then, Genji leaned over Cannon, who was crouching on the floor. You did well. You should sleep now, too. Yes. Thank you very much, Genji-sama. Just as he had done with Shannon, he softly covered Cannon's eyes with his hand, then gently pressed the area around Cannon's collarbone with his other hand. And when his hand was removed with the lightness of a feather, there was a crimson rose there. Genji's a badass, as always. I love Genji. A servant. But the rose shape quickly turned into the stain of bright red blood pouring out. What? What is that? What a boring person. Even though it's so fun to poke the balloon of life with a needle so that it forcefully explodes. Spectacular, Genji. You truly are furniture. Thank you very much. Well then, Beatrice-sama, Ranabe-sama, well, this is my final task, allow me to rest. Tch. Damn you, snatching away my fun. Why don't I take all the thrashing and mashing I wanted to do to them and give it to you instead? Beatrice faced it with an unsatisfied expression, but Ranabe spoke quietly to Genji with a soothing smile. You have worked hard. You are my greatest servant. As a final gift, I shall bestow upon you a peaceful sleep, paying for all the labors you have performed. What? Wait, it's not your place to. When Runaway snapped his fingers, Genji slumped to the floor like a puppet with its strings cut. Suddenly, and yet gently, Genji also did not manage to become a big shot. This really is just the everyone pisses off Beatrice chapter. He crumbled, falling into a sleep that no witch could call him back from. It was as filled with kindness as the sleep he had given Shannon and Cannon. Man. What was that, Ranabe? What a boring anticlimax. Are you not a mighty great witch, my lady? What happened here is hardly worthy of your concern. It isn't like you to let the provocation of someone like Shannon get to you. Hmm. What was it that Beatrice had what was it that had Beatrice so irritated? Was she still unable to remove the thorn of Shannon's words? Ranabe laughed lightly, as though lamenting the complexity of humanity at a woman's heart and ordered the Seven Sisters to go. After all, there were still two sacrifices left for the first Twilight. In case you're curious, wait, we can we can check the Japanese here too. Yep, in this case it says Seven Sisters, so really it just is interchangeable. <clears throat> Looks like the English goes to the trouble of matching the Japanese, which is nice. The Seven Sisters disappeared in ecstasy. How do you disappear in ecstasy? Tell me, show me. <laughs> Just advance like one minute. What was the point? What was even the point? What it was doing the nighttime rounds. Our kitchen had always been empty, except the Ushimita family household. So checking that the doors and windows were all closed had no real purpose. However, ever since the time Natsu had condemned such an attitude as being careless, the nighttime rounds had become part of the servants' daily routine. In the first place, Natsu had ordered this because of the occasional witch disturbances. Everyone who came and left this island knew about the legend of Beatrice, the Witch of the Forest. It had become established this, as this island's characteristic ghost story. Because of that, it was natural that some people would claim that, when they thought they were alone in the mansion, they would hear a strange sound or see the shadow of a person. However, when that created a little too much of a disturbance and reached Natsu's ears, she made a fuss thinking that some suspicious person might have been entering and leaving. Apparently, she had aroused all the servants and had them check throughout the mansion. Because of all that panic over the witch, it had happened because... No, it had happened before Yoda's arrival. He had only heard about it from the more senior servants. Ghost stories like that could be found in any more place. Even at the hotels and restaurants Yoda had worked at, there had been plenty of them. So, when he heard about the story in the silent, he had given a forced smile, thinking, Ah, so they have that kind of thing here after all. That forced smile aside, he had figured that, when in Rome, do as the Romans do, and had taken it seriously. Yoda went along with it on the outside, but his heart, he assumed, to be a, he assumed it to be a childish trick. At first, that is. It certainly is eerie. Yes, I can see why it was so easy for past servants to get to a panic. He could understand how someone doing the rounds on an eerie night like this might believe they'd seen a ghost if they saw a lace curtain leaving the breeze from a window that hadn't been closed. So if you make one of the witch of the portrait, there is a curse. It seems there was even a servant who received a serious injury and quit. Well, I wouldn't want that. Think of my age. I probably wouldn't be granted a workplace this hospitable again. Ah. Which of the portrait? I'm working sincerely, so please give me some peace. Beatrice. 
you, you need to say it properly, Billy. Otherwise, you don't get anything. Koto <laughs> prayed to the portrait, his hands together, as though he was at a Shinto shrine. But she's a Western witch. Pray again. At that time, he thought he heard a sound. The kitchen? Was that the sound of something metal falling on the floor? Maybe a mouse or a cockroach had come out and knocked over some of the dishes. No, no. How could that be? It was usually cleaned thoroughly. Think he could check out what that noise really had been. Go to enter the kitchen. He turned on the kitchen light. When he did, he heard a strange sound. To a cook like Gota, the sound felt like the lid on a pressure cooker or something shaking. Surely there wouldn't be a pot on the burner when no one was in the kitchen. Even if someone was using the gas, walking away from it would be quite dangerous. Just in case, Gota decided to inspect the area around the gas range. Only well, you guys could hear her purring right now. What is this? When he did, in the quarter with the gas range, the pressure cooker really had been set out, just as he thought. But the flame wasn't on, and yet the lid was clanking. Wait, let's, let's see, let's see. I don't know how that sounds with filters on. Do let me know. Something fermenting and leaking gas? How could that be? Then was there a mouse or something inside? How could, how could there be? Ridiculous. When people were watching, Gota acted as though he had a bold personality fitting for his build. It's okay, we're, we're gonna get rid of the, the other Gota for now to avoid a continuity error. But he had actually, but he actually had an unexpectedly timid side to him. He was frightened that there might be something inside and he couldn't bring himself to check it carelessly. In his cowardice, he grabbed a nearby wooden pestle. And with a clunk, he tapped it a little forcefully against the side of the pressure cooker. When he did, the clanky sound suddenly stopped. He should have been relieved that it stopped, but the fact that it stopped when he'd hit it was even more eerie, and made him even more suspicious about what was inside. Hmm. Mysterious phenomena do not exist in this world. Yes, which is magic, things like that couldn't possibly exist. All phenomena can be explained with science. He Gota could be the protagonist. Replace battle with Gota. I wanna see how I wanna see that story. As if monsters and witches could exist. He repeated that many times, trying to build up his own confidence. The gap between what he was saying and what he was doing was quite comical. Who would believe in a witch? Who would believe in magic curses? Useless. Useless. It's all useless. Come on, show me what you really are. Take that. He moved the lid of the pressure cooker. And lying exposed there was the sparkling clean silver at the bottom of the pot. There was absolutely nothing frightening like he'd imagined. Whew. Aha, uh -huh, it's only natural. There's no way there could have been anything inside. By now, Gota realized that he'd been a coward. So, when we still had some doubts as to what had caused the lid to make that sound, they figured it wasn't a big problem and decided not to worry about it too much. Then he took the lid he grabbed and softly set it back down where it'd been. It's fine. It won't make a sound. Of course it won't. As if witches or magic could exist. Clank. Huh? Eep! All the pots and dishes in the kitchen started clanking at once. They grew even stronger so that finally the lid to one of the pots fell off. And from inside that pot, a slender white arm reached out. It swallowed the other pots one after another, and another, and another. Eep. As if, as if witches could exist. As if I'd believe it. When the number of arms grew to seven, a loud, shrill laughter split the air. What a letdown. Too bad that someone who can make such delicious food is such a lightweight. If you don't want him, I'll take him. He's all mine. Wait, I said no. I'll take him. Huh? What? What? Yeah. Come on, let's search. There's only one more. Hold on, one sec. I have to bring Dota back. Why, why is OBS shit? OBS sucks. OBS is too damn basic. Hold on. I can't even do what I want to do in OBS. I have to literally open up Photoshop for this. I got it. It's a, oh, it's, it's a fucking web key. Really? Seriously? It's a web key? Real? You gave me a web key. Well, what the hell am I supposed to do with this? I can't do my funny meme. 
Hold on. And no matter what I do, it just gives you the black background if I try to save it or anything. Fucking web P. It was a mistake. Let's convert it to a PNG. That's literally all I need. Thank you. Thank you, cloudconvert.com slash webp to PNG. And now... This. Yeah, I don't have GIMP. I have Photoshop though. Good enough. Alright, there we go. You'll always be with us. Come on, let's search. There's only one more. That old hag. Where is she? She isn't in the mansion. What about the guest house? The first one wins. First one wins, right? Come on, search, search. Find her, find her. Don't be noticed by the relatives in the dining hall, right? And don't get noticed by the kids in the guest house, right? Search in silence. Kill in silence. After all, it's still just the first twilight. She isn't in the guest house. But she wasn't in the mansion either, right? She's slacking off somewhere. Oh, wait, right. Oh, I forgot about this. Seeing shit. Hey, hi, I found her. She's in the Rose Garden. Why is she standing around there without an umbrella? She's already good. up. All mine, all mine, all mine. You blockheads can just sit there and watch. I told you. No, this one's mine. Come on, if we take any longer, we'll be scolded by Beatrice son. Let's take care of it all at once. There, found her. Surrounded her. Come on, let's get along and do it all at once, okay? Die. <laughs> The strongest furniture. Pretty strong for a part-timer. Huh? What? Uh, what is this? Oh, ho, ho, ho. What naughty girls. You wouldn't happen to be friends of that child, would you? Just what is this? This old hag. There's got to be some mistake. One more time. <laughs> I was also a badass secretly. Why can she defend against us? Move aside. One more time. No matter how often you try, it won't work. This person is good. I am waiting for that child. Would you mind calling for her? Do, do you really expect us to run errands for you like that? There's no need. Beatrice son. After all, even I have been assisted by now. I was certain that you had awakened. Runabe, it's been a long time. Yes, truly a long time. This person's talking to Runabe Sama without using Sama. And it's been a long time since I've seen you too, Beatrice. She, she's not even using Sama for Beatrice Sama. They <laughs> basically ultra instinct Sama. Enough. Don't you know who this is? The name Beatrice itself is hers. I only inherit it from her. This is my teacher, the previous Lady Beatrice. The previous Lady Beatrice? <laughs> I'm screen capping that. Don't mind me, I like that. Gold butterflies appeared in ones and twos from the Garden of Roses and began to gather around Kurosawa. Then, after she was wrapped in a golden sparkle, she burst and disappeared, and Kurosawa's form was no longer there. She's not the meme instead of Goda because, like, of scenes like this. See, Goda doesn't get a scene like this. Tragically. Goda doesn't get this. Instead, there was another golden witch, the one who once taught the path of an endless witch to Beatrice, and the only person Beatrice ever called teacher. Her hair was long, beautiful, and vividly youthful, and her figure in that elegant dress couldn't possibly be mistaken for an old lady. No, this looked like a completely different person from Kusawa. Well, well, teacher. I never even dreamed that we would meet each other again. Yes, neither did I. 
I certainly never dreamed that my sleep would be disturbed. Such a troublesome time for you to awaken. If you'd remained asleep as usual, the first toilet could have ended without much trouble. Or perhaps I should be glad you're here. I was just getting a tad bored. As usual, it seems you're toying with sinless people in a vulgar game. I believe I taught you several times that the power of the animal switch must be used to cause people trouble. Don't say that, teacher. Isn't boredom our natural enemy? This is just a little space to escape from that. <laughs> the more the corrosion advances, the stronger my power becomes, and the easier it becomes to summon my minions. But who would have thought it would release the seal on you, teacher, at the same, same time? We actually have a pretty cool scene coming up. I think next stream I might, um, go off what the scene is like in the anime. Because I actually really like this scene coming up. <laughs> it's precisely because I predicted such a thing would happen that I slept so very close to where you were. Though I prayed in my sleep that it would not be woken again. Being reunited with you like this is a very sad thing for me. You're as cunning as always, teacher. Renove, have that young furniture step back. Furniture only serves its master. The master is responsible for all of her crimes. Certainly. Madame Beatrice. I've already passed that name on to this child. Come now, step back, furniture girls. I may give warnings a second time if you did not listen to the first. However, do not accept do not expect to receive a third. Step back, seven sisters of purgatory. If you get dragged into this, only dust will remain. Back, everyone. When obey and the seven sisters of purgatory retreated. Which fight, which fight? <laughs> After that, what remained was the Beatrice whose daring expression didn't falter and the teacher Beatrice, who had given up that name and wore a composed smile. Well then, teacher, what tea shall I prepare for a long-awaited reunion? Let's see. This reunion was longer in coming than the visit of a comet. Perhaps I will accept your hospitality. And if it seems a mistake has been made, I'll have you return my name with the title of Endless Witch. So, you have the title of Endless Witch has a license renewal policy. As you wish, teacher. Ooh. Uh, that line rings true nowadays. See how splendid your disciples become, and see how far she surpassed you so long ago. Titles as a service. The yeah, air between the two Beatrices seemed to explode with sparks. Just by glaring at each other, they purged all spirits from that space. As they watched, the Seven Sisters shivered. After all, if they'd retreated just three steps less than they had, they'd have already been turned to dust by now. So come, Beatrice. Surrendering my name to you is the only regret I have in life. I will not correct that error by my own hands. Tis tis tis. You've got it wrong, teacher. My only error was becoming your disciple in the hopes of gaining such a puny level of power. Get it? What are you calling magic? What are you calling the endless witch? All you've got is a power that can be gained just by noticing, right? And you act as though that's so great and impressive. Your turn's long over, teacher. Yeah, like I've said, there's only so much you can do in this engine. <laughs> I, I don't have a clue what's going on anymore. What in the world is happening right in front of my eyes? You poor thing. It seems my disciple is causing you trouble. I apologize. But who the heck are you? Why did the old Kumasawa turn into a nature like this? I mean, seriously, who are you? I don't get it. What kind of special effects are these? My head feels like it's gonna explode. I'm the witch teacher of that child. My old name was Beatrice. When that child succeeded me, I gave up that name, so I have no name of my own. Like you've already said, your disciple's been a real pain to me. Please, take responsibility and do something. No, oh, wait. <clears throat> I don't believe in stuff like this. As if witches and magic could exist. I will accept this messed up battle. Damn it, what should I believe? <laughs> even if a witch appears that's on Battler's side, he still can't even believe in them. Ho ho ho. That's just like you. Hospitality with a very quick temper. I'd expect nothing less from you, teacher. It seems that this is so trivial to you, you don't even feel like opening your eyes. But I doubt you'll be able to win unless you're prepared to wreck this whole island, see? Come, rise, Shoulder War Towers. It's the Shoulder War Towers. This, this looks a lot better in the anime, trust me. In response to Beatrice's summons, a terrific Earth Tremor split the Rose Garden. She's basically using a spell card here. She is literally just using a spell card. 
and on either side of her shoulders, two massive war towers sprouted and stabbed into the heavens. They stretched up to a hundred, a hundred, that's not meters, a hundred meters tall, and each had over 360 ports. There were war towers with the gods' army corps, which had prevented even groups of ancient heroes from invading the sacred grounds. As Beatrice elegantly floated in the gap between the massive two headed towers, she looked down on her teacher, steamed with a sense of absolute superiority. With the two massive towers lined up behind her shoulders, the witch looked very small, like a butterfly dancing between huge trees. Don't think you can dodge by turning into butterflies, okay? The density of the Twin Towers barrage... You could you could have avoided the wording. Wouldn't just make you a pin bug sample. It'd make you a madly stay up pin cushion, right? I've decided 120 ports open other towers, and godly soldiers ready the multi-shot ballistas. Is that the end of your turn? Yeah, famous last words. Blast away! would have appreciated an epilepsy warning. <laughs> Beatrice Blast. Essentially, yeah. The ballista shots that numbered over a thousand were all fired at once, drawing a beautiful geometric curtain of death. The boar sound as the bow strings were played was probably even deeper than that of a reaper swing and sickle. Come arise, fallen tower. Let's put the single language and let that sin be known. The sky was staring at an incandescent red, and in between the clouds, a blazing massive tower fell upside down. That massive falling tower in its rubble sucked in the thousands of blister shots, so that not one of them approached the body of the witch who had summoned it. That's right, no group of people, no matter how large, could approach the mysteries of heaven. That was the reality of the fallen tower. As I'd expect from you, teacher, if you do something, you always do it big. My turn isn't over. Come, rise, sons of Avaldi. Bestow upon me a worthy spear. As the massive crimson tower that had fallen made a terrible gold-colored explosion, a massive spear appeared from inside those flames, so tall like a tower that you had to look up to see all of it. It was too large even for a giant's hand. The divinely beautiful spear of the gods was so massive, they gave the illusion that the fallen tower head turned into a spear of the same size. It was a spear of certain victory that none could escape. It looks like your twin towers won't help you now. How foolish to block up your means of escape on both sides. You can't defend against even a single spear. When she snapped her fingers in command, a massive tower-sized spear shot at Beatrice like a lightning bolt. It aimed right for the middle of the center of the Golden Witch's heart with extreme precision, as she danced in the gap between the towers like a butterfly, slicing straight through the air like a flash of lightning. Ha! So you use going near at a moment like this? You're really an incredible teacher. First useless towers. Arise, giant soldier battle line. They're just playing Yu-Gi-Oh, basically. Fully block the divine spear with your shields and chests. The shoulder war towers exploded in gold, and became several billion gold butterflies. Those butterflies took the shape of seven massive armored soldiers. Each stretched a full... That's probably just meters. Maybe it's a plural of meters that's, like, obsolete. Full 50 meter thay into the sky, and they lined up in front of Beatrice, protecting their master and pulling massive seeds that powered like windmills. I guess the effects aren't terrible. It's you, you can still envision it. Just just picture it, just picture it as best as you can. They were as massive as a mountain range, which behind them was like a small moon hiding behind the mountains. Once in the past, when the massive shields these giants held had been readied by the whole regiment, they had protected King Wilhelm's castle, not only from arrows, but from the wind and the rain. But when they'd faded, faced upwards and held their shields to the heavens, not a single raindrop had gone through. Foolish. The shame of a witch who was forgotten to respect things sacred. Did you think mere giants could defend against the Spear of the Gods? Indeed, no matter how much human metal you are armed with, you, block, you cannot block a Spear of the Gods. A wonderful epaulet mate by Madam. No way, Beatrice Summer? Of course I haven't forgotten, teacher. Come arise, disciples of Hephaestus. Must hope on me a worthy shield. I love how ridiculous this scene is. A golden whirlwind arose at the feet of the giant soldiers. It was a cloud of countless butterflies. They attached themselves to the massive shields like gold leaf, sparkling like they were a gold mirror. It was the absolute defensive wall given to a goddess by the chief of the gods, the, the Aegis Shield, and the Holy Spear, which left the dignified tail behind it like a comet, crashed into the mountain range of that gold shield. There was a terrible thunderous roar. It was the creaking of the pillars that held up the heavens. The divine spear spun around and around, and was sent flying in the direction of the setting sun. 
Impossible. She defended against the Divine Spear. No, that is not correct. The Divine Spear avoided her. It is the law of the gods, and absolute spear and absolute shield must never fight one another. Although, in the end, it means the same thing as defending against it. Your skills have improved from engaging in these fights so often. Or rather, it seems like you're still as bad as ever with this kind of game, teacher. I feel like they're just doing, like... What's, what, what's the word? What's... What was the name word? I can't, I can't remember English. I'll look it up in Japanese. <laughs> don't remember. They're just doing improv. <laughs> they're, they're just doing like an improv skit, basically. <laughs> it's my turn to strike back. I shall follow the code and counter spear with a spear. The giant soldier battle line, which had fully blocked the divine spear, re released its holy gold shields. The shields fell to the earth, making the ground shake. When they did, another gold whirlwind arose. The seven gold shields changed their form into seven massive spears of lightning lying on the ground. At once, each of the giants lifted one of their legs high and firmly stomped on the tips of the handles. As the earth shook with a thunderous sound, the seven lightning spears spun beautifully and flew up above the giant soldiers' heads. Soldiers' heads. They scattered into a golden splash and began to fall before the giants. Each of the giants squared off, and with the force of their whole body, they kicked and smashed them. The broken pieces numbered exactly 30, and became lightning spears of exactly the same size as the originals, which made 210 for the seven giants. And all of those burst at once, with each splitting into 30 thorns for a total of 6300. They became a barrage of thunderclouds drawing a beautiful geometric pattern, and each changed into three bolts of lightning, so that 18,900 th thunderbolt dot predecessor Beatrice. It's, it's that one Alice card where the bullets split into more bullets, that split into more bullets, that split into more bullets. Read this, but in Japanese, I'm really bad at quickly reading Japanese numbers, so I don't think I could do a very good job of that. やぶけた範囲はそれぞれ、それ、30、30を数え、原形となる同じ大きさの犬住より隣、それが、あの人で210本となり、それらは一切に混ぜて、さらに、角が 300 no, is, is there is there Danmaku? I don't see Danmaku yet. Oh yeah, it is Danmaku. It's right there. It's literally it does say Danmaku. Uh Sanju Bon no uh Thorn is a fucking thorn again. Toge. Toge ni bunetsu shite. Six thousand three hundred, which would be a Rokusen Sambiaku. Ponto Nari. Let's see uh They're using like old language here. It's because she Ikubaku. Ikubaku. Ikubaku ka. Hold on. Eh? Oh, right. It's. Right. Uh. Kikugaku. Oh, that's that's geometry, right? Kushi Kikugaku moyo kaita. Actually, this should probably be uh, a guy that here. Danmaku no. Ryan to nori. Sorry, you sorry, I'll submit that. How do, how do you say three fourth again? I think it's a weird word, right? I'm sure, it's not just a Mitsumata, maybe. Hold on. Mitsumata. No. Uh, yeah, I, I think Mitsumata is correct. Mitsumata no Inazuma ni Sukata wa kai eighteen thousand nine hundred. Oh no, to natte. Sendai no Beatrice chia uzu. Kimata He calls her madam. Oh. Okay, stop. For madam. That bundle of almost 20,000 thunderbolts must have reduced the teacher's body to dust, but there had been no resistance. Beatrice knew immediately that she'd been fooled. At that time, from the direction that the sun is supposedly set, she felt the impossible rays of sunlight. 
A brilliant ray of light shone upon her profile. It was the figure of her teacher, holding aloft the spear of the gods that supposedly been repelled for a while ago. She bore a sparkle like the sun on her back and made it shine like the incarnation of darkness. As Beatrice watched, she was trapped like a mouse in a cage, quartered in a dead end formed by the giant soldier battle line. Now, the predecessor Beatrice had seized a position directly alongside them. Beatrice is going to die. Be replaced with another one. My time is over, Beatrice. Have I exposed my flank? Her bold expression faltered even once, but now it twisted for the first time. Fast and Beatrice could click her tongue, the predecessor Beatrice released the Holy Spear. As it leapt through the air, it changed its form once more. Come arise, Divigar brothers. Okay, sure. It stole upon me the giant smashing iron hammer of heaven. Great soldiers protect me. What are you doing, you blockheads? By now, it was no longer a spear, but the whirlwind of a massive hammer that raised a sound like a windstorm as it threw, flew through the air. It was the legendary hammer that had shaken even the king of the frost giants, so the giant soldiers couldn't escape from that fear. So regardless of how strongly their master ordered them, they couldn't get in the path of that hammer. Back rank mate, rest in peace. Damn it! For the whirlwind of that massive chunk of metal, Beatrice was nothing more than a mere speck. The instant the whirlwind started to suck Beatrice in, she appeared to change into a massive war tower. The iron hammer smashed the war tower, scattering tremendous amounts of rubble, but it did not reach see who had escaped behind it. Furthermore, when the smoke started to settle, the war tower had sucked in the massive iron hammer without crumbling and walked away. Even the giant smashing iron hammer couldn't break through the final tower protecting the witch. However, this war tower was active the witch's last trump card. It was a war tower for dodging that could only save her from danger once. But this tower was impregnable. No weapon could break through it. At that time, the moon disappeared. As Beatrice hid in the shadows of the giant soldier battle line of the war tower, she looked up at the sky. When she did, inside the moon was the figure of a massive horse, ridden by the god of war and death. The predecessor of Beatrice rode the horse with him. His cloak had blocked the moon and swallowed in an eerie shadow. The spear of the gods was in his hand once more. In other words, it was a godly knight who had jumped over the ramparts formed by the giant soldiers in the war tower, attacking from the heavens. Smothered mates. <laughs> you got me. Smothered mate. It was fun, Beatrice. Whoa! The struggle to the death between the two witches with, with the same name was over. <laughs> uh, got that unlovely me echo. The spear that had been launched from the heavens pierced the ground. The giant soldier battle line of the war towers put up into countless gold butterflies, wrapping the area in a gold colored storm. Seeing if I can find like a picture of this scene. I think I'd have to bring up a video or something. Oh. I'll get one next time. Try to. If I can think to. There's a bunch of fight scenes in um uh, novels five through eight that unfortunately don't get animated because we didn't get a second part to the anime. As well, we'll get to them eventually. Then came the sound of thunder, the sound of the falling rain and wind. If you looked around, the rose garden was empty. The butler and the rest were watching the two witches confronting each other. But Beatrice alone had changed. She had been pierced straight through by the spear, from the base of her neck and her right shoulder to her left buttocks, unable to even reach the ground with her feet, horribly exposed like a pitiful pinned butterfly tormented by the wind and rain. Be Beatrice Summer. As expected, a truly fearsome person. That settles it, Beatrice. Mm. Yeah, ouch. Beatrice wore a bitter smile of false courage. But a strand of blood dangled from her mouth, making her look even more pitiful. The title and power of the Endless Witch. You will return them to me now, along with the name Beatrice. You were too immature to clear yourself the Endless Witch. Stop. Forgive me, teacher. I was just fooling around, okay? I will take my name back from you. I shall return you to original, your original form. Perhaps you should relinquish this power which is beyond you and live a life suitable for yourself. Come, try to remember. What form did you have? The predecessor Beatrice began to recite the words of power. When she did, small gold butterflies gathered near the skewered Beatrice and began to swim about her. 
I wanted to like get a picture of Skyward Beatrice from the anime, but I just couldn't find it. It's really annoying. Damn it. Not too many screenshots on Google, I guess. You'd really think something like this would come up. Oh well. Is there CG for this? I have no idea. Um, I'll look actually. Oh, just the CG. If the CG, I'd love to show that off as we go. Actually, I I don't know. Oh, okay. Uh, there 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 is um like a collection of them. Hold on. Let me see here. Which they to organize these in numbered order, not name order, because I don't know which novel is named which. This one? Uh, no. There, there isn't CG for this one. Oh wait, no, that's that's the pachinko that I'm looking at. Hold on. There... Mm, nope, there isn't. There's a couple CG for this scene, but there aren't any really good ones. They all kind of suck, unfortunately. Let me see here. No, there's like nothing for the anime on this wiki. Oh well. Who cares? I'll figure it out next time. I'll find something. Like butterflies sucking the nectar out of flowers. They began to suck the magical power out of Beatrice. It seemed to cause her intense pain. A cry of anguish issued from Beatrice's mouth. Plus, if I show something from the anime, it'd be nice because you guys could like place a voice to Beatrice then. <clears throat> she no longer had any power to resist it. Come, try closing your eyes. Try to remember. What form did you have? Come, Beatrice. Repeat it with me. Let us sing a song together. Then it will be over soon. Let us end your pain as fast as possible. Let's bring it up on YouTube. I don't know. was reanimated for the pachinko version in an interesting way oh my god hmm it's kind of cool maybe i don't see the anime version up on youtube but i do see the pachinko one which i've never even seen so i think once i wrap up umineko for today i'm going to show that real quick that would be cool. I'd like to see that. Anyway, let's keep going for a bit. <laughs> You're right. How long has it been since I've sung with your teacher? Come, together now. Together now. Come, try to remember. What form did you have? Come, try to remember. What form did you have? When the two of them began to recite the same song, more and more gold butterflies danced around, swimming around Beatrice. It will be alright, my lady. You will lose your place as my disciple, but that will not change the fact that you are the lady I serve. After that, I shall read a book for you again. I shall bake you apple pies once more, just like it was long ago. Come, try to remember. <laughs> yes, try to remember. Are you finally starting to remember? Hey, teacher. Did you remember that thing behind you? What is... This. When the predecessor, predecessor Beatrice looked behind her, it was an eerie hedgehog world up there. No, it was herself. There was another predecessor Beatrice, whose whole body had been packed with ballista shots. Lying there like a pincushion doll. Come, try to remember. What form did you have? Or maybe that's not right. Come, try to remember. How were you killed? Yeah. <laughs> the predecessor Beatrice was stunned. Her form gradually began to fade away. This is... When did you... At the beginning, I did not summon a pair of shoulder towers. There are four towers. Teacher, you curiously stepped across the seventh rank rook, boundary of death created by the two hidden towers, which were looking in the distance on either side of you. It was bad manners of me to say check this late. I must I simply must apologize. The battle had been decided at the very beginning. It had been over since the time the predecessor had leaned forward, readying her holy spirit to attack Beatrice, who had wedged herself between her shoulder towers. 
The hidden towers lurking on either side had bathed her in a wooden storm of ballista shots from 720 ports on both sides, pinning and killing her. However, Beatrice hadn't wanted it to be resolved like that. She had wanted to let her teacher take her next move, and continued acting as though the game was still on. She had immediately revived her with the endless power, and had made her continue the game as though nothing had happened. Then, the predecessor slowly remembered that she had already been killed, and began to vanish completely. When she did, the spear that piece Beatrice also vanished. <laughs> Beatrice finally landed on the ground. There wasn't even a trace of a scar. It was fun, teacher. If you want to play again, I'll revive you anytime. And once we've had some fun, I'll make you remember that you're a corpse again. See? I did everything you told me to, right? Didn't you tell me to always put my toys back in the boxes when I'm done playing with them? Was it an easy victory? You fool, it was a tough one. If I hadn't tricked her with the four towers, I would have been the one dead. As I'd expect from teacher. But now I can stand proud. Now I've completely surpassed teacher. Run away, clean up teacher's remains a bit. I haven't lost my respect for her that much. Certainly. Tonight's first twilight became a little too riotous. A little cleanup will be necessary. I shall see to it immediately. Oh, it's it is time to clean up. When Renovay stamped his fingers, blazing, sparkling eyes began to blink open in the shadows and darkness, becoming goat-headed attendants that appeared one after another. One by one, they were at least stood in a, at attention in a line be behind Renovay's back. This time, what should we do about the six corpses? Another closed dream pattern? I'm in no mood to think now. I will leave it to you, Renovay. An extraordinary closed dream to torment Battler, if you would. <laughs> Certainly. Then it shall be extraordinary. Isn't it always? Ha 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 ha. Okay, where's Battler? Battler, did you see my big moments? Damn it. After being shown that screwed up magical storm, what could I have done I? Forget just which is existing. After being shown that tremendous flashy fantasy, what can I deny now? I don't get it anymore. It was like that last time, too, but how can I deny these awesome, wonderful magic battles? Isn't that right? After watching this, you can't talk your way out of it, right? Okay, Battler, let me hear some ridiculous reasoning. <laughs> my lady, your laugh is becoming undignified. Oh, my apologies. But that isn't my fault. After all, if Battler tightly closes his eyes, grinds his teeth, and shows me that ever-so-bitter expression, it just automatically slips out of my mouth, you see. <laughs> so, Battler Saman, why don't you return to the table without losing heart? My lady is expecting your counterattack, you see. Quit messing with me. How the hell can I make a counterargument? In the first place, everything was already screwed up when that tower spread it up out of the earth. Should I say that under the ground in Rakanjima, there's a secret laboratory for building super alloy combining robots or something? And that pushing a button can make these strange towers sprout up? Right, and then those huge giants must be the robots. And maybe an evil secret association's mecha monsters? I don't get it. Don't talk to me. Gwah! <laughs> look, 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 look. Don't cry, okay? Bang, bang. It's magic. If you want, I'll crush the moon and make comets fall like rain. I could even bury the whole island in those massive breasted nature chants you like so much. See? Hee 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 hee. Come on, come on, look, look, look. My turn's over. See? Show me a response. Watch your counterattack. You can't, can you? Except that there's a quadrillion things you can't do. You're useless against this, right? You actually like this kind of fantasy, don't you? You love shoted manga. I get it. That's been going around the streets lately, hasn't it? In manga and light novels, in anime and movies. Some teenage brats get a whole bunch of strange special abilities. And they blow up all sorts of stuff with the fate of the world on the line. You love that too, don't you? I know, don't hide it. You love it, right? <laughs> yeah. Hasn't the thing you love just been displayed before your very eyes? Why do you believe in it in manga and anime, but you won't believe in me? Believe, believe, believe it. You can't argue back, not after you've been shown something like this, right? Look, look, look. Answer. You don't need to think. You can just obediently say, I'm sorry, Beatrice Summer. Look, look. Try saying it. I'm sorry, Beatrice Summer. Try saying it. Say it, say it. Don't be embarrassed. I love these scenes when someone just talks for like four full screens of text straight. It's incredible. It's usually like just Beatrice or Kinzo that do that. <laughs> the three Beatrice sisters. Okay. So. I'm gonna wrap up Umineko there for today, but we're gonna have a special treat first. But it's not gonna be saved in the pod. <laughs>